this is our first uh, partnered choices stream. Um, just got that news, so I was like, oh boy, I've been holding on to that one. <laughs> I've been holding on tight to that, that piece of news, y'all. So I am super duper excited to uh, have been asked by uh, Play Choices and Pixelberry to come through and be um, their first partnered streamer. So what does that mean for us? We're gonna we're gonna talk about some stuff first, and then we'll jump into the we'll jump into our book. Um, so first, let me uh, get get the uh, my verb my verbiage because I don't want to mess up. <laughs> so <laughs> because that's like the worst thing you could do is you get on and the first thing that happens is you screw everything up, right? <laughs> so we don't want to do that. <sighs> oh my god, y'all, thank you so much for like all the really like nice stuff that y'all were saying on Twitch. I mean on Twitter rather. Um I started like boohooing and everything before this all started, so thank you for that. Ship of Fools, thank you so much for continuing to subscribe to the mothership. Much appreciated. Thanks for the love on the layout. Ah, we started tearing up! Me too! <laughs> Me too. Uh so um, the things that, you know, being, uh, well, what, and what does it mean to me? It means that, you know, it's awesome to have, you know, the, 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 the backing of Pixelberry Studios and the folks over at the, the Play Choices social team, um, behind our stream, behind our community, Mothership. So thanks Martians for popping in and coming through and loving these streams and giving them all the love that you have been because uh yeah we wouldn't even be here right now if it wasn't for that so thank you thank you and thank you and thank you on the other side of it um again want to thank you know pixelberry for partnering with me on this stream um that's first and foremost uh and also thank you thank you thank you every once in a while you're gonna see some words from our sponsor and you could do that here with that that lovely you know exclamation point play choices it's going to come up like once and at least once an hour so you don't have to like stress about that but if you know anybody who might be interested in downloading the app they can help us they can help the choices community grow by clicking that link right there in the chat okay um trying to think what else what else what else what else and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, you know, we'll get to do some, you know, cool, you know, it'll it'll just expand what we're able to do here on the mothership with choices and with Pixelberry. So it's awesome. This uh, we want to play it. No, uh, the choices app is a uh, basically uh, an interactive story app. It is free to play. Thank you. Thank you so much for the biddies. Um, it is free to play. Uh, there are options to, um, to uh, you know, purchase premium content, and that's through what they call the diamonds. Uh, but you do not have to do that. You can earn the diamonds just by playing the books. So, yeah. You're, you know the link in the chat though is is only for the Google Play Store um, but you can also download uh, choices for free on Apple and uh, the Apple Store so it's on iOS as well if you happen to grab that drop a tweet to play choices and let them know that I sent you <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> oh my goodness uh, I have played Queen Bee. Okay, so, okay, this, okay. So, about Queen Bee. One, I really don't want to play it because that'll mess up, <laughs> that'll mess up my playthrough for the sequel. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. Oh, M.A., thank you so much for the biddies. Thank you so much. Oh, bad jokes. Okay, we got that. <laughs> we got you. I got you on that. I got you on some, on some bad jokes. Um... And, <laughs> oh, you know, if you're in this channel, you're getting bad jokes. That's just how it is. <laughs> oh, dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. Yes. So, uh. 
Hey, shoot chick. Hey, teach. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, very excited for this opportunity. It's super awesome. And uh, I was just like, wow, man. You know, so, yeah. You see, I'm excited to watch you play through what we have in store for... Oh, yeah, for QB2. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Uh-oh. Whoops. Whoa, what happened? Did he get timed out for 30 seconds? What? Why? Why? I don't see why. I don't see why either. Okay, hold on. <laughs> ah, you're, um... Uh, it'll be over in 30 seconds. Yeah, it's 30 seconds, so... We've had to do some, some new things to moderate the chat, so I apologize in advance for anything that's going to happen that's going to be, uh, like, messing some stuff up. So. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's it's just been some stuff going on, so I'm, I've had to kind of tighten up my moderation on the chat. But we'll, you know, we'll, we we got we got y'all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh man! So I apologize in advance for folks who have been on Twitter. You kind of already know what's been going on. Um, thank you so much for starting the hype train. We're on level three of the hype train. What the heck, y'all? <laughs> that's 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 just wild to me. You know? Um, yeah, Twitch has been kind of. It's been uh, the you know kind of the the wild frontier right now, so we want to make sure that we keep our community you know safe and and peaceful. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you again, Sledge, for the uh, <laughs> thank you for the uh, biddies again. Thank you for the love again. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! We have moved on into the hype train. Holy cats, you guys! Thank you for that. Woo! Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. Wow. So neat. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of hearts. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so much again. Um, but yeah, so what's going to happen now is uh, Thursday nights, I'll still be doing, you know, our Throwback Thursday streams. Uh, that so that'll still be happening uh, you know older books that I've either played or books that I haven't played uh, and tomorrow shipwrecked comes out I'm so excited for that I'm not streaming it on Friday but I will be streaming it on Saturday so if you're interested in that I will be streaming shipwrecked on Saturday uh, at 2 p.m. Pacific time be there or be square yes nightbound is werewolves yes <laughs> so uh it'll be shipwrecked and i will also start uh the um the unexpected heiress so that's saturday so two streams a week y'all two streams a week that's good what's gonna be happening uh let's see what else do we have going on let's see You're so lost? Oh no! You're gonna dare me to, to name my MC Gilligan, M.A.? You know I'll take you up on that challenge, right? You know I'll take you up on that. So. Um, I owe a bad joke, so let me take care of that. And then, uh, we'll talk about, you know, how hyped we are for these other books that are coming out. Let's see here. So, let's get, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. Where do werewolves store their things? In a warehouse. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. The groans already? 
Y'all groaning already? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, this is this is super cool, y'all. I I'm like blown away. I just wow. I'm just blown away by all the uh, all the support and everything for the streams and for you know myself and our community. I'm super hyped about it. Hey! Thank you for continuing to subscribe to the Mothership to Panics. Thank you so much. Oh, I got a level two hype train emote. Nice. Let's share that. Choo choo. Oh, did I? Well, good. I'm glad I could I could uh, help to inspire ideas and inspire other people to also stream choices because it's an awesome app. And deserves a lot of love, so. What's your idea? Lay it on me. I kind of already have an idea as to, like, my captain. I kind of already have an idea as to where I want to go with, with the, my shipwreck playthrough. I don't know anything about it. That's probably something I should mention. One, uh, you know, still an independent streamer. I'm not employed by Pixelberry Studios, y'all. That's so. That's the yeah. I'm not. Uh, secondly, I have no information that you don't have. <laughs> so, so there's that too. I don't know anything about what's gonna happen in the story, just like y'all don't. So, I probably should mention that. Not privy to that stuff. And let me get on in here and change some things around before it gets crazy. So we'll keep that and we'll drop that. Okay. Oh, well, you're going to find out. You'll find out. <laughs> um, I like my streams to be a little longer. There is there is a reason for that. Uh, you know, so if you have questions about streaming or any of those things, I will be happy to answer those for you. Um, so you, you can hit me up on Twitter or hit me up here. You know, Discord if you have it. You know, I can answer those questions too. For the, for the reasons why I would do that. Yeah. But absolutely, I encourage folks to stream it because everybody's play style is going to be different. Everybody's streams are going to be different. So the experience will be different for everybody who's viewing it. You know, so there is that. You know, it's just like when you see brand new games come out and you see like, you know, a bunch of streamers that are all streaming like the new Call of Duty game all at the same time. Everybody's experience will be different. Thank you, Diamond. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You know, so that's one of the cool things about that, so. Yeah. Yeah, you can stream Twitch from your phone. Uh, through the Twitch app, you can, you can stream Twitch. You can stream choices directly through your phone through the Twitch app. So there is that, too. So there's a lot of ways to do that. So again, thank you so much, Play Choices, for uh, letting me be your first partner streamer. Thank you for partnering with me on this stream. I am very much looking forward to everything that is coming next. <laughs> you know, uh, and we're gonna have a good time. It's gonna be the you know same stream, same you know vibe, same everything. So that none of that stuff is changing. Mortal Instruments vibes. I agree, Kelsey. I agree. Um, I haven't really read this, so actually I need to start this book over because that is on Chapter 6, and I don't remember anything before that. And we're going to start at the beginning. Restart.
Let's see. First chapter is called The Life of the Party, which sounds great to me. You're reading like three different books right now? Okay. Tell me what books you're reading. Uh, and if you have an L.I. picked, who is your L.I.? So er, that, that's a question for everybody. What books are you reading? Who are your L.I.s? And we're going to start. This is Nightbound Chapter 1. A trip to New Orleans plunges you into a na supernatural war, bound together with a roguish night hunter, bound by fate and bound by night. This book contains violence and mature situations. Player discretion is advised. So. Ah, there you are. The whispers of time have long foretold your coming. But I must admit, you are not exactly what I expected. I see that you are a... A woman. And there are lots of gorgeous faces to pick. Ooh. Hmm. You know what? I think I like face four. Let's go. Yes, I remember now. I have seen you through the veil. I know your face. But the rest of you is unclear. All right. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to spring for that fly hair because I like it. You know, my hair is dyed too, so let's go with that. <clears throat> yeah, I love it too. The voice says, Tonight marks the anniversary of your birth. Appropriate in a way. One could nearly call it poetic. In any case, it is a night for celebration, is it not? How will you garb yourself to observe this momentous occasion? Ooh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute too. That's cute. Oh dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. Absolutely. I'll be happy to help. There's a lot of cool stuff happening. Yeah, the end. Uh, <laughs> I haven't read that last chapter of Laws of Attraction yet, but I'm very hyped that they've announced the Laws of Attraction too. That's going to be super awesome. Uh, you know what? Let's spring for the cute outfit. Let's go. Oh, dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. The fateful moment fast approaches, the fulcrum on which the world turns. Are you prepared to face it? I am ready! Your assistance of uh, names for... Oh, absolutely! Absolutely. We shall see. Okay, so we need a name for our, uh, our main character. Hmm. Let's see. Alex. Miranda? Miranda? I like Miranda. <laughs> we want Miranda? Let's go with that. I like it. So we can also, of course, access the closet. Tap the closet button on the bottom right if you wish to change. That's one of the cool things. You get to buy outfits and then you can change into them as needed or as you want. So you can do that. Hey Diamond, uh, and oh Mariah, that was that would have been a good one. I picked Miranda. We we'll, we'll roll with that. I'm gonna keep Mariah for a, for in the memory banks for a, another uh, another story. Matter of fact, I better write that down because I have a bad memory and I will forget. So yes, uh, I have read the Elementalists. I have read the Elements list. I liked it. I thought it was a very good book. I, I, I think I want to say I read the second one, but I know I read the first one. Mariah Yawn Fire. <laughs> okay, so Nightbound. It may dared me to name name the uh, the shipwrecked MC uh, Gilligan, but I think Mariah will be our our shipwrecked MC. Sorry, 
Sorry, M.A. <laughs> Mariah's gonna win out. <clears throat> Weathered tombs loom all around you as you run full speed down the narrow path. And Miranda's thinking, I have to get away. I have to. An unearthly scream rends the still air coming from close behind you. Too close. You start to look over your shoulder when the world around you seems to blur and a powerful voice echoes in your mind. Keep running. Do not look back. I have to uh, keep running. Clenching your teeth, you keep your eyes focused on the path and push yourself to an even greater speed. Uh, am I working tomorrow? I am not. I am at home all day. Miranda's thinking, come on, Miranda, just keep moving. Dodging between two crumbling mausoleums, you feel a surge of hope as the cemetery's gate comes into view across an open expanse of grass. And Miranda's thinking, thank God. But before you could take another step, the strange voice returns, seeming to come from everywhere at once. You won't make it. Turn back. Hide. And Miranda's like, who says, well, who are you? And how do you know? A nearby sound draws your attention. You look left to meet the empty eyes of your pursuer. Yes. And it's this, like, skeletal thing with, like, blood coming off the jaws, and it's just, uh, you know. The creature hovers unnaturally a dozen yards away, blood dripping slowly from clawed hands, and you look from it to the distant gate, biting your lip. Maybe it's a demonic, dashing British devil. <laughs> sure. <laughs> of course it is. The gate is so close, Miranda's thinking. And I'm going to find somewhere to hide because the voice said to. You whirl around and sprint back to the way you came. This creature's furious shrieks pursuing you down the labyrinthine pathways. Shree! And Miranda's thinking, come on, it must be somewhere to... And you skid to a stop by a half-crumbled tomb with the monstrous howls echoing in your ears and you crawl inside. <laughs> Seduce it. <laughs> Let's see. Say that five times fast. Demonic dashing British devil. Demonic ba dashing British devil. Demonic dashing British devil. <laughs> no, I can't say it too fast. <laughs> Demonic dashing British devil. No. <laughs> yes. I, I do love a good action sequence. And slam the heavy door shut behind you just in time. <laughs> The monster is, like, growling outside, and Miranda's thinking, now what? And your breath seizes in your chest as the creature claws at the outside of the door, then starts to circle the tomb, hissing in frustration. <laughs> Here in New Orleans, flash it, Lady K says. And the monster is hissing outside, and Miranda's thinking, what do I do? What do I do? And you hold your breath, trembling, waiting for the voice to guide you. But this time, it doesn't. And Miranda thinks, help me. I, I don't want to die here, please. And a pale hand bursts through the crumbling stone, seizing you by the throat and dragging you from your hiding place. And Miranda shouts, no! And for an instant, time seems to slow and you find yourself unable to move as the voice speaks one last time. Oh, nice! You're on chapter 12? Sweet! You heed my advice and yet death still catches you! So many times I've seen this moment and every path leads to your death. There is no more you can do to save yourself. We must find another way. Shree! The monster screeches outside and the creature's claws come scything down and you scream as your flesh is torn open and the whole world becomes a storm of blood and white hot agony. Blah. And Miranda's like, oh! <laughs> K.O. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, M.A.? <laughs> and Miranda shouts, Gah! And we wake up. You jerk awake, and you're banging your head against the cab window. 
And Miranda's like, how? What the? TKO. And the cab driver says, well, I was wondering when you'd wake up. Everything all right back there? And Miranda says, well, yeah, I just had this weird dream. There was this graveyard and this creature. I wonder what oh, it means. Dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. Welcome to the mothership. And the cab driver says, <laughs> I don't know about that, but New Orleans is definitely the city to make your weird dreams come true. And the cab turns onto a bustling street and pulls oh, over. Oh dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. And you step out of the cab and the heavy, honeysuckle-scented air wraps around you like a plush blanket. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> The street sings with the joyful sound of brass instruments and tapping drums, intertwined with laughter and rowdy shouts from the crowd of revelers. Miranda says, Whoa! And you lean against the lamppost and slowly look around, taking it all in. And it looks like we're, uh... On Bourbon Street? I think that's where we are. We're on Bourbon Street. I've never been to New Orleans myself, so. Yeah, I do. I love the music in this game, so. Okay. Or Magazine Street. Okay. And Miranda says, this place is just wow. And among the sea of jubilant faces, you realize that one is standing unnaturally still and eyes fixed steadily on you. I, I've never had a beignet. I would love to try one. <laughs> Ooh. Face number two. Yes. He's good looking. And some handsome guy is just staring at us. And Miranda's like, who? And the man holds your gaze for a long moment as you stand frozen, struck by a sudden portentous feeling that you can't explain. Until the moment is broken by a young woman rushing forward to wrap you in a tight hug. It's Kristen! And she says, Oh my god, Miranda! Is that really you? Oh my god, you look great! I would love to go to New Orleans. One of these days. Only problem is, I don't like to fly. <laughs> so I guess I'd have to take a train or something. Bidets are the devil. I love them. <laughs> Dang it, Kristen ruining the moment. I know, it's like, we were here. We were having a moment. What's going on? <laughs> Uh, blocking up in here, Kristen. What's going on here? Yes. Oh, and thank you, Diamond, for popping that into the chat. We are partnered with Play Choices. We're super partnered with Play Choices. And you can download it right there at the link in the chat. It is for the uh, Google Play Store. Uh, but you can also download it on in the iOS Store or the Apple Store on iPhone. It is free. It's free to download. So grab that bad boy. Tweet play choices and let them know that I sent you. Hashtag that. Hashtag it. Let's go. Yeah, I don't I don't like to fly. <laughs> Miranda says, Kristen! Hey! And you glance back at the crowd, but the stranger has vanished, and you're like, Boo-hoo, what the heck happened? There was this really hot guy, and then he's not there anymore. And Chris is like, Miranda, are, are, are you alright? Image at 2.0. <laughs> And Miranda says, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Krista says, right now, I'm amazing. Can you believe we're finally doing this? And Miranda says, well, it took us long enough. We've been only talking about coming here since college. I got a lash in my eye, y'all. Hold on. It's driving me nuts. Okay. Krista says, hey, you said you wanted to go all out for your 25th birthday. And going all out happens to be my specialty. Man, I remember 25. 
Chris says, you won't believe the week I have planned for us. Does the birthday girl have any special requests? And Miranda says, well, this week I want to mm, see the historical sites. The Long, uh, Long View Gardens, the Gallier Home, the Art Museum. And Kristen frowns at us and it's like, oh, please tell me we didn't come all the way here. So you could drag me to a bunch of dusty old buildings. <laughs> and Miranda smiles back at Kristen and says, The bar inside the bar inside a 250-year-old building that was once owned by a famous pirate and is said to be extremely haunted. And Kristen says, You had me at bar. Chris says, now, come on, my co-worker Vera said she'd meet us at one of her old haunts. I think it's over this way. <laughs> shots, shots, shots. <laughs> Abacita says, yeah. Shots and beads? Oh, gosh. <laughs> then I'd be in some serious trouble. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you follow Kristen down the crowded sidewalk, weaving through the dancing crowd. And Kristen says, Vera grew up here before she moved to New York, and she's going to take us to all her favorite spots. It's going to be awesome! And Miranda says, I hope so. 25 feels like such a big deal, you know? Maybe it's silly, but I just feel like things are going to be different after... Dodging around a group of musicians, you walk right into a slender woman walking in the other direction. And the woman says, Hey! And Miranda says, Oh, I'm sorry. And the woman smiles, taking a long sip from her bottle of beer and shimmying playfully. And the woman says, Apology accepted. Besides, if a gorgeous woman wants to run into me, I'm not going to object. And Kristen says, Ooh, Miranda, does your new friend want to join us at the bar? And the woman says, Well, tempting offer, but unfortunately, I've got somewhere to be. Maybe next time. And the woman turns to leave. As she does, her body seems to blur, shimmering with a strange inner light. And when she's looking back at you, it's, she's the kind of like the, the 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 sight you see is a like a woman with like elven ears and white hair, wearing like a white gown or a white blouse or something. And it's like, wait a minute, but that's not the woman I just ran into. So what the heck? So uh, the woman says, "See you around," and she moves on. Miranda says, what the hell? She's not, well, she doesn't say that. She's thinking it. Kristen says out loud, Miranda, are you okay? And Miranda says, her face, it changed it. And you trail off, shaking your head. Sorry, uh, just thought I saw something weird for a second. She's an elf. I know, right? <laughs> and Kristen says, the week I have planned for us, you'd better get used to getting weird. Did someone say hell? <laughs> Oh, goodness. I would freak out, to be honest. I know, I would be like, wait a minute. But I saw something, but I didn't. <laughs> Hello, Tito. How you doing? Chris says, now come on, we're already running behind, and if I don't get something neon and boozy in me ASAP, I will literally die! A demon elf. <laughs> ah, thanks, Ron. You follow Kristen down the street, casting one last look over your shoulder. And Miranda's thinking, what the hell was that? And a few blocks down, you and Kristen duck into a small eclectic tavern and walk your way through the tower. Or th uh, through the crowd towards the bar. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, tower? Toward. <laughs> Run for your life, demon elves have taken over. Lady K says. All right, first round is on me. Pick your point. And the bartender slides two sugar-rimmed shots in front of you and Kristen. Whoa, like magic. Miranda says, but we didn't even order anything yet. <laughs> and the bartender says, you are in a notoriously magical city, Sherry. 
but the Big Easy can't take credit for this one. And she gestures to two blonde men who are standing nearby. And they walk over, and one of them leans against the bar beside Kristen, speaking in a clumsy French accent. Hello, Sherry. I am Chance, and this is Garrett. What do the call you? Aside from beautiful? <laughs> if it's a bad accent, we're going all the way. And Garrett says, oh, for the love of... <sighs> Chance, we talked about the accent. And Chance says, come on, man. Fran chicks love the French accent, and this is New Orleans. You can do a funny French accent. Miranda says, Chance, I would seriously consider finding a new opener. And Garrett turns to Kristen with an apologetic smile. And he says, sorry about him, miss. I swear, he means well, usually. And Kristen says, I mean, I'm not complaining. Make Garrett a real ally? <laughs> yeah. That, that particular model is, like, super cute. It pops up a lot, and I'm thinking, can he be an ally? Please? <laughs> But he's not. <laughs> of course you would, Brandon. <laughs> Sophisticated English accent. Oh, of course. I would too, actually. And Miranda says, hey, thanks for the drinks. Bottoms up. And you throw back the shot and lick the sugar off the rim. And Miranda says, wow, that was sweet. And Garrett says, not as sweet as you two for pull putting up with this fool. Kristen giggles as she downs her own shot, batting her eyelashes at chance. And Kristen says, so, we're actually here to meet a friend, but maybe we'll catch up with you later? And chance says, hell yeah, we'll be upstairs. And with a smile and a wave, the two guys wander off into the crowded bar. And Miranda says, well, that was interesting. And Kristen says, right? This city is hot guy central, and I am here for it. Speaking of which, check out Mr. Mysterious over there. And you look, and trying to look casual, you turn and follow Kristen's gaze to the rugged man sitting alone at a table by the door, and his eyes lock onto yours, sending a nervous shiver down your spine. The man stares at you intently as if trying to read something in your eyes and then looks away. And it's the man from outside. You know, brown-skinned gentleman with dreadlocks, and he's wearing, like, a dark brown leather jacket, and he has a pendant, some type of pendant around his neck, and a gray button-down shirt. Background cuts to a unicorn. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Kristen, are you okay? <laughs> I know, right? You're not, you're not rugged? <laughs> you're not rugged, huh? And Miranda's thinking, that's the same man I saw on the street. Is he following me? Krista says, oof, be still my heart. Did you see the way he looked at you? Puckish rogue. <laughs> Lady K says, hello, cutie from outside. I know, right? <laughs> Miranda says, yeah, I did. It was honestly kind of hot. That look was intense. Krista says, right? I've got goosebumps and I'm not even the one he was looking at. Maybe it's a male presenting unicorn. <laughs> Adorable stalker vibes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Krista says, Miranda, you ne need to either go get his number or tag me in. Miranda says, fine, fine. I'll go talk to him. And you trail off as you turn back around to see that the man is gone, leaving only an empty glass behind on the table. Miranda says, huh, I guess he had somewhere to be. Kristen is the quintessential valley girl. I kind of figured she would be. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. It's the Californian in me, I guess. Because <laughs> everybody sounds like a valley girl in my head. <laughs> Across the room, the doors swing open and a beautiful, stylishly dressed young woman sweeps in, looking around. Ooh. Ooh, she's cute. I like her gloves. Kristen is the younger cat. <laughs> Squealing, Kristen jumps off her seat to wrap the woman in a hug. Oh my god, V! I can't believe we're already uh, we're all really here! 
and Vera says, Hey, Cookie! Welcome to my old stomping grounds! And the woman turns to you, shooting you a bright, open smile. Okay. I am not sure how to say her last name, so if I butcher it completely... Or if somebody knows how to say it, let me know, because I want I want to know how to say it right. I still love your reading of things, cat. Unrelated. <laughs> Why do we call it old stompy grounds? Where are our new stompy grounds? <laughs> That's a good one, Paint. Ray Monique. I could see that. I'm Vera Ray Monique. And you must be the birthday girl. Oh, hey, cool. Thank you. I was, I was like, okay, I think I got that. So thank you, Raymondique. All right, got it. And Miranda says, that's me. It's so great to finally oh, meet you. Oh, dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. And as Vera slides onto the bar stool next to you, you notice that she's wearing a pair of long silk gloves. And Miranda says, those are gorgeous. Are they vintage? It took you two weeks to learn Dimitres. <laughs> yeah. And Vera says, you know, I'm not sure. I have quite a collection. Gets a little hard sometimes to keep them straight. V's kind of a glove connoisseur. Never spotted in a never spotted in the wild without a stylish pair. And Vera says, Well, I do love a pretty pair of gloves. They're my weakness, I guess. And Vera laughs, but you notice a nervous edge to it. And as you watch, you see Vera's gaze dart around the room as if looking for someone. And you lean closer and touch Vera's arm, surprised when she flinches slightly. And Miranda kind of looks at her sad and says, Vera, is there someone you're hoping to avoid? And Vera says, I'm sorry? <laughs> Mira, Vera. <laughs> and Miranda says, you seem a little on edge. And Vera says, well, that's very perceptive of you, Miranda. She says, well, I like to think I could read people pretty well. And Vera says, sure, seems like it. There's a lot of old memories here for me, that's all. Nothing for you to worry about. So how are you two liking New Orleans so far? Seen anything crazy yet? And Krista says, oh my god, yesterday I was at this cabaret where I saw a guy get paddled on stage. But the paddle was on fire. Oh, okay, from the, from the source, Vera's last name is Romanak. Oh, Romanak. Romanac. I like it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Awesome. I like it. First of all, wow. Second, I just got in this evening. Craziest thing I've seen is the wallpaper in this place, Miranda says. Yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> Definitely MVP for that. Thank you for that. Krista says, I mean, there was that weirdness in the street earlier, too. You said something about a lady's face changing. And Vera goes still, and her face carefully blank as she glances at you sideways. And the unicorn. That's right. <laughs> we did see a unicorn. Vera says, is that true? You saw someone change? And Miranda says, oh, it's nothing. I was probably just loopy from jet lag or something. And Vera... Bites her lip, looking troubled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Vera says, you know, there's more to New Orleans than old buildings and wild parties. A lot more. This place, these people, they aren't always what they seem. And Miranda says, what does that mean exactly? Have you seen things too? And Vera scans the crowded bar once more, pasting on a nervous smile. She says, well, what do you say we go talk somewhere a little, a bit less crowded? This place has a great balcony upstairs, and the manager's an old friend. It's also a great way to watch all the nighttime debauchery where, without getting beer spilled all over you. And Krista says, ooh, I'm so in. What do you say, Miranda? Suspish, big time. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that line. 
I dare you. Brandon, I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> Tutorial. Going up to the balcony will give you a chance to learn more about Vera's past and witness the wilder side of New Orleans nightlife. I say let's go up to the balcony. Let's do it. Miranda says the balcony it is. Lead the way, Vera. Use it tomorrow in stream. <laughs> you go. <laughs> After a warm hug and a low conversation with the manager, Vera leads you and Kristen to a velvet curtain staircase at the back of the bar. Several flights up. You emerge onto a moonlit balcony overlooking Bourbon Street. Oh, so we are on Bourbon Street. I just guessed. <laughs> You emerge onto a moonlit balcony overlooking Bourbon Street. You lean on the rail, oh, taking a dear. long breath. Now I shall have to create more. A motion. long breath of the sweet, humid air. Wow, you weren't kidding about the view. You can even see the St. Louis Cathedral from here. And the city stretches out before you, glittering like a field of stars. Below, the streets are alive with the chaotic body sounds of a party determined to last all night. And Krista says, wait, is that guy really going to... And you look around just in time to see a shirtless guy climbing on top of a car, an open bottle of champagne in each hand. And Vera says, yep, I believe, sure believe he is. And Miranda looks shocked. She says, what? And the man upends both bottles over his mouth, champagne and foam spilling across his face and down his abs. And shirtless guy says, Whoa, I am a god! <laughs> and he takes a flying leap into the crowd, falls flat on his face. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> remember this book so fondly, but this is such a treat to see new people watching and reading it. Yeah, because I, I hadn't seen this scene before. And Miranda says, well, you don't see that every day. And a waiter approaches to take your drink order. And Krista says, well, so what are we having next? Hmm. S is it called a Sazerac? Sazeracs. Uh-oh. Bad jokes. All right. We got it. Hold on. Krista says, ooh, keeping it classy. Miranda says, well, at least for now. And as you sip your drinks, you squint across the balcony at the other VIP guests. Miranda says, hey, isn't that the guy who bought us sh the shots earlier? And Chance says, Garrett, you got to try these spicy alligator nuggets. They're unreal. And Krista says, ooh, he looks even yummier up here. I'm going to go say hi real quick. As Kristen makes a beeline for the guy, you and Vera exchange an amused look. And Vera says, that girl is on a mission. And Miranda says, yeah, she usually is. I can't say that I mind this time. And Vera says, well, why is that? Has anyone had alligator before? I haven't. But I'm just wondering if anybody else has. And Miranda says, give me a chance to chat with my new favorite local, of course. Alligator is delish? Okay. Never had the opportunity for that. It is super chewy and gross, M.A. says. Fishty says she that, uh, that they have. Miranda says, well, how long has it been since you were here last? And Vera gazes off into the distance, her sweet face growing troubled, almost wistful. Had it in Florida. It was fried. Gator tastes like chicken, especially when it's Cajun, brown-eyed beauty said. Teach says, uh, no, I'm not too much of a picky eater. I'm too much of a picky eater. Oh, right, right. You're, yeah, er Eric has had it, but not anymore, of course. He's vegan. So that's a no-no. Vera says, uh, 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 she looks kind of sad. She's about five years ago, give or take. It's kind of hard to keep track. And Miranda says, Vera, well, why did you leave? And Vera looks down at her hands pensively, biting her lip. She says, I left oh, to go to college. Dear. Now I shall have to create more Martians. 
Now that I've graduated, I'm thinking about going to law school ev eventually, maybe. And Miranda says, somehow I feel like there's a little more to it than that. And Vera says, reading me? And Miranda says, I don't mean to pry, really. And Vera says, it's okay. It's good to talk about it a little. As she pauses, thoughtfully, choosing every word carefully. Oh dear, now I shall have to create more Martians. How does one get partnered with cho uh, with choices? Well, I was I was uh I was asked. <laughs> so I would just say, you know, if you're a content creator, you know, make sure that you're tagging them and letting them know that you're out there and, you know, just make sure that you're getting noticed, you know. Yeah. But do you do other types of content creation? I'm sure they would be open to that. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet. Thank you. Vera's, again, looks sad. Used to do YouTube? See, there you go. I just, I didn't like who I was oh, going to become dear. if I stayed. Now I shall have to create more Martians. And Miranda says, what do you mean? And Vera says, I, I guess you could say I like to see the world in black and white. Right and wrong, just and unjust. Everything is clear cut. This place, flashy as it is, it's all shades of gray like smoke. And it's too easy to lose yourself in it. I didn't want to live like that. And Miranda says, well, it seems like you're thinking of someone when you say that. She says, I have family here, but we don't really see eye to eye on a lot of things. And Miranda says, well, are you going to see them while you're here? Oh, thank you, Shuchik. I appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Vera says, Vera looks mad. She says, hell no. That's about the last thing I need. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Vera lets out a deep sigh and then shakes her head. She says, but hey, we're here to have a good time, right? And I come bearing gifts. Bearing gifts? A bad jokes, and then we'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> I know Vera's totally pulling the heartstrings. After that seriousness, we had to go and do we had to do something else. Let's see. <laughs> How do you make a werewolf stew? So how do you make a werewolf stew? You keep him waiting. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, currently. I, well, I will have more access to do uh, giveaways for our channel, so that will be super cool. So there's that. Um, I already had a VIP account, but now uh, I Play Choices is now, is now covering my VIP account. So there's that as well. Um, and uh, promotion on social media, so there's that. So, of course, you know, t uh, the tweets and posts on Instagram so they will help promote your content so yeah there's a there's there's some perks to be partnered <laughs> some very nice perks so thanks again choices and pixelberry for sponsoring and partnering with me for this stream so thank you thank you thank you <laughs> oh Stu, I just got it <laughs> it's, it's all right brown eyed <laughs> So there's that. Um, but yeah, I don't mind answering questions for that. <laughs> Might have to make some plans to stream choices. There you, there you go. <laughs> I would love to see more folks stream it. 
Really plan to make choices set uh, on my streaming schedule and a part of my streams. I love it so much. Me too! Me too! <laughs> I love it too! I could tell you one thing I would really like. If somebody is late, up late at night, and, or, you know, later in the evening, and wants to, like, you know, pop pop in streams after me, I could bring the raid to you. So, you know, host your content. So, just something to put out there. Just something to put out there. Follow other choices streamers, you know, and check out their stuff. Things like that. <laughs> yes. And welcome uh, to the Mothership uh, D8. Working on flexible hours. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Pain. <laughs> Thank you so much. They, uh, they could not have partnered uh, someone I enjoy more. One of my favorites for text-based content. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. For, oh, so, yeah. So Vera came bearing gifts. So she rummages in her bag and pulls out a colorful string of beads. Oh, you're doing a steamy choices now? Uh-oh. <laughs> Which one are you reading? Are you reading The Nanny Affair? Because that's some good stuff right there. Just saying. The Nanny Affair is good stuff. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're in a lot of channels, Aza. I would watch. Come on. Probably someone I'd stream early because she's in Denmark and wants to attend. Oh, yeah. I say don't count YouTube out. Don't count it out. There's a lot of people who stream on YouTube. So, yeah, don't count it out. Don't discount that. Ho oh, ho! Only thing is, is that in order to create a team, like a team that's recognized by Twitch, you have to be partnered with Twitch first. I am not. I'm not partnered. I wish I were. I wish I were. But I would be happy to coordinate stuff with folks and help y'all out. I'm good with that. <laughs> the Nanny Affair is a mess. <laughs> Ooh, shiny Mardi Gras beads. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I got what you mean, Azo. Yeah, it is a good, good messy drama. And Vera says, happy birthday, Miranda. See anyone down here you'd like to toss these to? And you lean over the balcony, serving the milling crowd below. Ooh. Hmm. Hey, KT. Ooh, there's a hunky dude down there or a gorgeous girl. We're going to toss it to the girl. Why not? And Miranda says, I hope she likes beads. Of course I have social media. Are you kidding me? Right there. Of course I'm on social media. <laughs> Might buy the VIP for the new book. Heck yeah! Shipwrecked is uh, on VIP first. Start dropping tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll be streaming it on a Saturday, but I know uh, there's some folks that'll be streaming tomorrow too, so. Vera says, oh, something tells me she does indeed. You wave to get the girl's attention, then toss the beads down, and she snatches them out of the air, grinning up at you. And the pretty girl looks up. She's like, thanks, cutie. And the girl reaches behind her and starts fiddling with something behind her back. And Miranda says, hold on. Is she? And the girl reaches under her top, pulling out something bright red. And with a wink, she tosses it up onto the balcony. And pretty girl says, catch. It's her bra. Oh, my. 
Miranda says, well, that just happened. And Vera says, see, stick with me. I'll show you some things. <laughs> and as you look over the festive scene below, you catch a glimpse of a tall, hulking man working his way through the crowd. Excuse me, sorry. His features suddenly flicker, becoming monstrous inhuman. Woo! And he looks like a stone creature with fangs. If I could just squeeze past you, thanks. And you recoil from the rail railing. You recoil from the railing, mouth dry, your heart hammering in your chest. And Miranda's thinking, it's just like that woman in the street. What is wrong with me? And Vera looks shocked. She says, Miranda, are you all right? You look a little gray. Beads and bras, yeah. And Miranda looks kind of sad. She goes, I, I don't I don't know. I, I thought I saw. And you dig your thumbs into your temples. <sighs> and take a long, few long, deep breaths. And Miranda says, it's probably nothing. A trick of the lighter. You trail off as you realize that Vera is staring at you, her face troubled. And she frowns. She goes, you know, I meant what I said before. This place isn't what it seems. And Miranda says, well, when you lived in New Orleans, did you ever see things? Things that didn't make any sense? We look a little gray, Mr. Rock Guy down there. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And hey, Carrie, by the way. Yeah, I, I, when I did, when I played through this, the, this chapter before, I tossed the beads to the, I actually, that's not true, because I never came up here on this scene. I never did it. I stayed down in the bar. So yeah, this is my first time doing this scene. So I thought to toss them to the guy, but it was like, nah, I want to see what happens if you toss it to the girl. <laughs> Vera says, nothing about my life here made sense. The things I saw, the things I did... I wouldn't wish them on anyone. Miranda says, Vera? She goes, my advice, steer clear of anyone or anything that doesn't look right and pray it didn't see you looking. You regret diamond mining it? <laughs> you could always restart it though. Restart it, play it, play it again. <laughs> Miranda says, I, uh, okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Vera looks away, casting her eyes over the crowd, and she suddenly grins, pointing at something on the other side of the balcony. Vera smiles and says, well, looks like someone's having a good time. You look where she's pointing, and you see Kristen snuggling up to Chance a few yards away, and she gazes up into his eyes, fingers lightly stroking his chest. Oh, Braidwood Manor? That was a good one. I like that book. Chris says, say it again. And Chance, <laughs> he's buzzed, I'm sure. And he's like, you are the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. And Miranda says, our girl sure knows what she wants. And Vera says, wish I was more like that sometimes. Wish I could just, just go for what I want. Sis works fast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you have to pay for those, I think. Yeah. I remember playing through the, um, like the one shot ones. I, di I didn't do the one with, um, oh goodness. Ashton. The, uh, it's like my brain just shut down. <laughs> like, wait, what is his name? I forget. I did Chris's and, um, and, uh, Caitlin's when, uh, they had them for, um, they had them for basically for free. I think it was like during a Valentine's Day dealy or something. James! Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking way too hard. I was thinking way too hard. And I I just could not remember his name for a second. I know, I know my friends are gonna grill me for that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. Oh shoot. As she trails off and her eyes meet yours in, for one charged moment and then glance away, shy. <laughs> you play this game too much. There's no such thing as too much. <laughs> Miranda is going to ask for a kiss. Why not? And you reach out to cup Vera's face in your hands, gently drawing her closer. 
And Miranda says, may I? And Vera's like, I... And she catches her breath sharply and then smiles and leans in to meet you. Her lips are warm and plush, parting sweetly under yours. Just as the kiss begins to deepen, Vera pulls back with a surprised little laugh. Wow, I, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. And you raise an eyebrow at her. Miranda says, really? Not even a little? And Vera says, okay, maybe more than a little. <laughs> Krista says, hey, you two. And you turn away from Vera to see Kristen elbowing her way toward you. Oh, well, hey, I'm glad you're here now. <laughs> um, uh, choices will be streamed on Thursdays and on Saturdays. So you're welcome to pop in whenever. Um, I do also stream on Friday, but that is not choices content. It's completely different. It's just, you know, I stream with a good friend of mine. And uh, we play some video games, most, mostly multiplayer. So come on through. Oh, dear. <laughs> now I shall have to create more Martians. <laughs> sorry uh, sorry I was like wait was I supposed to catch you wait is this a trust fall <laughs> Pixelberry Studios is like dang it Kristen I know right <laughs> and Miranda says are you done making out already and Kristen says the night is young and Vera says shall we head back downstairs Kristen says I have a better idea Chance told me about this super exclusive club that ha sounds amazing and I think it was called uh, Rougarou Rougarou? That sounds awesome. And Krista says, right? You just know a place with a name like that has a killer DJ and hot bartenders in themed outfits. And Vera's like, I don't know. We're already at a bar. Let's just stay here. And Krista says, oh, come on, you guys. It's your birthday, Miranda. I promised you the wildest night of your life, didn't I? When has Kristen, party queen Jones, ever steered you wrong? And she and Vera exchange a look, and she rolls her eyes, and you laugh. I bet Pixelberry would have caught me. <laughs> Maybe. And Miranda says, okay, okay. I guess you only turned 25 once, right? Chris says, yay, let's go. And Kristen leads you on a winding path through the French Quarter, ending in a dark alley littered with beads and plastic cups and abandoned shoes. And Krista says, my phone says it's right up here. And she stops in front of a rusting steel door set into the wall. And you can hear the strains of a faint, pounding beat beyond. And Krista says, yes, this is totally it. And Miranda's like, are you sure about this, Krista? This place looks. And Vera says, uh, Buku creepy? Ignoring her. Kristen raps on the steel door. A deep, gravelly voice rumbles from within. Password. And Krista says, wait, what? Yes. And I slot opens. And the bouncer says, password. And Kristen looks to you for help. Uh, hmm. It's my birthday? The bouncer says, oh. Well, in that case, come on in. <laughs> PB is awesome. <laughs> and Miranda says, wait, really? And the bouncer says, no, now get lost. <laughs> I knew he was messing. And Krista says, oh, come on. You're really going to turn away three gorgeous women with working credit cards? And the door screeches open and the bouncer steps out annoyed. Look, Jersey Shore, maybe you ain't used to hearing no, but this ain't your kind of place. What? You don't like money? And the bouncer says, we don't like tourists. Now take the girls gone stupid routine back up to Bourbon Street before. And a blood curdling shriek suddenly splits the air as a pale shape streaks out of the sky. Shree! <laughs> And Miranda says, what the? And the creature swoops down in front of you and drives two viciously clawed hands into the bouncer's chest. And the bouncer screams. And he, jer he screams as he jerks him up into the air and then rips him clean in half. 
I didn't know she was from Jersey. I would have done a different accent for her, but it works. Hot blood sprays across the alley, splattering all over you, Vera and Kristen. And Miranda shouts, oh my god! And the cre creature sniffs the air, and then its grotesque eyes fix on you. Snarling, it lashes out, knocking Kristen aside. And Kristen shouts, ah! And she hits the ground hard, her eyes turning white. Her whole body stiffens and starts to convulse. Ooh, Kristen looks like a zombie. Miranda shouts, Kristen! And Miranda's thinking, I should run over to Kristen. And as you rush towards Kristen, the creature rears up, gaze locked on you as it emits an awful shriek. And it starts to scream. And the creature stalks toward you and your whole body seizes with shock as you realize you've seen this creature before. And Miranda's thinking, it can't be, it's the monster from my dream. And Vera's like, hey, ugly, over here. And Vera chucks an empty beer bottle which smashes against the creature's skull and it ignores her, bearing down on you with a single-minded focus. And Miranda's thinking, it's after me, why is it after me? And Vera says, Miranda, run! Vera shout, Vera's shout hits you like a slap and you sprint for the mouth of the alley, dodging through a nearby archway. And weathered tombs loom all around you as you run full speed down the narrow path. And this kind of starts our dream, right? So Miranda's thinking, have to get away! Have to! Wait, I know this place! And an unearthly scream rends the still air, coming from close behind you. Too close. And Miranda's thinking, I've been here before! I remember! And that voice told me to keep running! And eyes focused on the path ahead, you dash across the uneven pavement, pushing yourself to greater speeds. And Miranda's thinking, I need to find a way out! And dodging between two crumbling mausoleums, you spot the cemetery's back gate across an open expanse of grass. And Carrie shouts, run, in the chat. <laughs> and a small sound draws your attention, and you turn to meet the empty eyes of your pursuer. And it's the monster, and it's hissing at you. <laughs> Is the hot dude going to save us? <laughs> right? And Miranda says, damn it, this thing is too fast. And the creature watches you, and its face and hands are streaked with fresh blood. And you look from it to the distant gate. And Miranda's thinking, oh my god, the gate! I remember this too! And I have to go for it. And you fling yourself toward the gate in a mad dash, just as the creature darts towards you, teeth bared in a grotesque smile. <laughs> and Miranda's thinking, I can make it! I can... And the creature slams into you, bearing you to the ground, howling victory as its claws tear into your back. And Miranda screams. And the voice is so close. But it seems my efforts were not enough to save you. I am sorry, child. Perhaps in your next life you will have better luck. And you died. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen. So we died. Try again. <laughs> I gotta kill the character at least once. Come on. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I thought we were gonna get away, but nope. <laughs> and so Miranda's thinking, I need to find a way out! And dodging between the two crumbling mausoleums, you spot the cemetery's back gate across an open expanse of grass. Small sound draws your attention, and you turn to meet the empty eyes of your pursuer. It's that monster and is hissing at you. Miranda's thinking, damn it, this thing is too fast! <laughs> it's the remix. Wicka, wicka. <laughs> yes, we have. Thanks, M.A., for the biddies. Damn it, this thing is too fast, Miranda says. And the creature watches you and its face and its hands are streaked with flesh blood. And you look from it to the distant gate. The gate, I remember this too. And I need to find somewhere to hide. And you whirl around and sprint back the way you came, hearing the creature's frustrated howls as it flies into pursuit. Miranda's thinking, come on, come on, there's got to be somewhere to... And up ahead, a broken tomb yawns open, a small dark space visible through its broken door, and you quickly crawl inside. And you barely shut the door in time, and you throw yourself against the door as the creature batters at it from outside. Rah! And Miranda says, oh, she's thinking, magic voice, if you're real, now would be a great time for some advice. Use seduction. Somebody roll a d20. 
<laughs> and the monster is hissing outside. <laughs> Crawl into the creepy space, right, Carrie? And the creature circles the tomb, howling with rage, and you can almost smell the hot blood on its breath. And Miranda's thinking, there's no way out. I don't want to die here. I don't want to die. And the stone shatters behind you as the creature's hand bursts through the tomb's wall and grabs you by the throat, dragging you outside. Where's Ava when we need her? <laughs> yeah. And Miranda screams. And a white hot spike of agony stabs into your skull as it touches you. And your whole body seizes, struggling desperately against the creature's grasp. Ah, the monster is growling. And through the blinding pain, you see its bloody claw pulling back, preparing for the killing blow. And Miranda's thinking, no. But then... A flash of light illuminates the graveyard. And Miranda's like, what? And a head still spinning from the pain. You turn to see a blurry figure standing atop the graveyard's wall, aiming a glowing crossbow bolt at your attacker. <laughs> Lady K says, crap, we're dead now. <laughs> Woo! And it's that hot dude from the bar. Yum. Get away from her. And the monster hisses. This isn't Cordis out of Rome. <laughs> right? And the man fires and the bolt explodes against the creature's head, fracturing into a spray of blazing sparks. The creature drops you and streaks off into the sky and its howls of rage echoing into silence. A moment later, you feel strong hands helping you into a sitting position. Are you hurt? Huh? And darkness creeps into the edges of your vision as you fight against the pain, struggling to focus on this, your savior's features. And Miranda says, who? Who are you? He says, I'm your bodyguard. My what? But the struggle is too much and your eyes close and you collapse against him, falling backwards into darkness. Why did the creature attack you and who is your mysterious protector? Keep playing to find out. All right, we're going to keep playing, of course. But first... First, we're going to take a little break. We're partnered with Choices, you guys. So, you can download Choices for free on the Google Play Store and the Apple I I Store, or the what is it, the Apple Store? I don't have an iPhone, so I don't have that, but I know it's, the, it's on iOS for free. The link in the chat there will take you to the Google Play Store. You can download it, and, it, you know, it's, it's a good time. You should definitely do that. If you happen to download it for, well, if you download it on either platform, you know, dro drop a chat. Drop, drop, drop some tweets. Let me know. So I can retweet those. <laughs> We're going to take a break for a couple of minutes. I just need to stand up and stretch a little bit. Oh, okay. It's the App Store. Yeah, see, I don't know. You're playing it while watching? Yes! Perfect! <laughs> And if you make different choices, let me know, because I want to I wanna know. So uh, I will be back and give you like a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll continue on to Chapter 2. Be right back.
right. Uh, let's switch back. All right. Welcome back. If you're just joining, what's up? I am Martian Cat. This is Choices. And we're playing a book called Nightbound. We're in Chapter 2. It's called The World of Night. That's what Chapter 2 is called. When we last left off with our heroine, we just met this absolutely gorgeous guy who saved our lives from a bloody monster in the graveyard in New Orleans. And it's supposed to be our birthday. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> oh, M.A., thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. Have a good night, too. Thank you for the biddies. Thank you for continuing to sub and, and support the channel. Super awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And everyone else. You know, whether, you know, it's not, there's no zero requirement, zero requirement to sub or give bits or any of those things. It's, you know, we just hang out here in the chat. This is all the support we, we would love to have. Welcome to Lurk. All of these things. So they all help us further the ideal of the red planet. All right. You jerk awake from a sluggish sleep, head roiling with pain. Miranda's like, huh? Where am I? And you're alone on a threadbare couch, a cracked ceiling above you. And Miranda's like, what the? And you look blearily around the small apartment, and the room is crammed with odd artifacts, dusty books, and strange gleaming weapons. So, it's a little apartment. We see a couple of different skulls on the wall. There's a, a sword rack. There's a few, looks like battle axes. On the table, it looks like there might be a, maybe? I don't know if that's a, like a, an old book or if it, you know, cards, but I'm thinking it's like a tattered book. There's some uh, potion bottles or something like that on the, on the table and there's also a pendant. And Miranda says, are those skulls on the wall? And who the hell needs that many axes? And head still throbbing, you get up and start to investigate your surroundings. And Miranda says, what is all this stuff? And first, we're going to look at the old locket. And Miranda's like, I wonder how old this is. And you reach for the locket, which glows with a bright, venomous green and snarls snapping at your fingers. And Miranda says, ah! Snatching your hand back, you take a large step away from the locket. And Miranda's like, how, how the, did that thing just? And growling softly, the locket settles back into its place on the shelf. We're going to look at the book. It's an ornate book. Looks like a brown leather cover. And you run your fingers over the gilded cover, tilting your head to read the inlaid title. Balthar's Infernal Bestiary. Or bestiary. You flip through the yellowing pages filled with sketches of leering, uncanny creatures. And Miranda says, Whoa! And you trace a drawing of a woman with a contorted, furious face and bat like wings. And Miranda says, The Manx Banshee? What pissed you off, lady? <laughs> Hepacita says, How many axes is too many? I would be creeped out by one. Yup. <laughs> Examine the skull flail, and Miranda says, Wow! And you run your fingers over the wickedly sharp spikes. And Miranda says, Who keeps something like this in their living room? And you pull your hand back, and you realize that your fingertips are stained a dusty brownish red. Just rust, Miranda, just a lot of rust, I hope. And you hear a creak behind you. Panicked, you grab hold of the nearest object and whirl around, raising your makeshift weapon to face the man who saved your life earlier that night. And he says, look who's awake, having fun touching all my stuff. And Miranda says, I, I, I what? He says, still a little out of sorts, huh? Not surprising. Need something to take the edge off. Or are you set on cracking my skull with that curtain rod? And she says, I? And you look down at your hands to discover that you are, in fact, gripping a cracked plastic curtain rod. And Miranda says, shut up! And you drop the curtain rod on the floor, and the man gives you a crooked half-smile. he's like, thank goodness, I was really quaking in my boots for a second there. 
And Miranda says, enough with the wisecracks. Who the hell are you? And what is all this? I'm Nick Ryder. And this is a hell of a way to thank me for saving your life. And Miranda says, Nick? You're right. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's just, I'm really scared. I don't know where my friends are and I have no idea what's happening to me. And Nick says, I get it. You've had one hell of a night. And frankly, I'm pretty used to people and non-people trying to bash my brains in, so no big. And Miranda says, still, thank you. That thing back in the alley would have killed me. I owe you big time. And Nick rubs the back of his neck, looking uncomfortable. And Nick says, no need to go overboard, okay? I'm just doing my job. And Miranda says, you're what? And Nick brushes past you and thumps down on the couch, patting the space next to him. Nick says, come on, take a load off, and I'll tell you what I know. And ca cautiously, you sit down next to him, keeping a safe distance between you. And Miranda says, okay, spill. Who the hell are you? And Nick says, like I said last night, I'm your bodyguard. And Miranda says, but I don't have a bodyguard. And Nick says, you do now, cupcake. And Miranda says, how about you stick with Miranda? Nick says, well, Miranda, somebody offered me six figures to keep you safe, and I take my duties very seriously. Well, I take that cash seriously anyway. And Miranda says, six figures? Who the hell knew I need protecting? A lot of people knew I was coming to New Orleans, but get attacked in an, attacked in an alley was not on the itinerary. And Nick says, you tell me, this is all I got. And he pulls out a folded, crumpled piece of paper from his back pocket. And Miranda sa looks, says, uh, a note? That's it? And Nick smiles at her and says, well, that was also the fat, <laughs> there was also the fat stack of cash. Along with a photo of you, a date, and a location. Tonight, at the Touristy Unicorn. So, I spent most of the week asking around, trying to suss out who you might have sent it. Who might have sent it? And Miranda says, and? And Nick says, and, and zilch, nada. No one in this town had ever even heard of you. So I went to the bar, and well, you know the rest. Screechy monster, arrows go boom, I saved your life. And Miranda says, but how could they know I would be there? I didn't even know I would be there. Can he call me Cupcake? <laughs> Lady K says, he sure can, why not? <laughs> He gives you an exaggerated look and unfolds the paper, and it simply reads, Protect her. And Miranda says, I don't understand. But as you focus on the words, a ruthless flood of memories comes rushing back, overwhelming you. The dark alley behind Rougarou, the shrieking grotesque creature stalking you with its dead eyes. Kristen on the ground, wide-eyed and convulsing. And Kristen says, oh god, Kristen! Shuddering, you wrap your arms around yourself, and Nick squeezes your shoulder with a strong hand, his brow creasing. And he kind of frowns, and he says, are you, you okay? And Miranda says, no, not even a little, Nick. What was that thing? And Nick says, what are the meanest damn monsters I've ever seen? Two holy light arrows barely dented it. Might as well have gone after it with a slingshot. Would have been more cost effective, too. Holy light arrows ain't cheap. And Miranda says, And my friend Kristen, is she okay? And Nick says, The brunette? She's in the hospital, comatose. She's lucky that thing only grazed her. And Miranda says, I need to go see her. I need to. And Nick stops you before you can get up, pressing you gently but firmly back into the couch. And Nick says, You can't. And Miranda says, well, why the hell not? And this is firstly because if something's trying to kill you, that's the first place it'll look. And second, the hospital isn't allowing any visitors yet. I had a hell of a time even getting them to admit she was there. And you sag against the back of the couch, tears welling in your eyes. And Miranda says, I can't believe it. I'm the one who wanted to come here for my birthday. She, she just wanted to have fun. And your stomach twists as you remember that you and Kristen weren't alone. And Miranda says, well, what about Vera? Our friend Vera was there. Uh, friend Vera was there, too. And she drew a, threw a beer bottle at the creature. 
She was trying to protect me. Is she all right? And Nick says, who? I didn't see anyone else besides the dead bouncer, I mean. Overwhelmed, you cover your face with your hands. And Nick says, look, I know it's a lot, but you're safe now, okay? And Miranda says, can you just start from the beginning, please? How is any of this possible? And Nick stands, stretching his arms above his head. And you catch a glimpse of taut abs beneath his shirt. And the web, and a web of old scars along his side. And Nick says, right, we're both going to need a drink. And he disappears into the kitchen, returning with two glasses and a bottle of tequila. And you squint at the murky liquid. And Miranda says, is that a dead snake in there? Nick says, hell yeah, we don't drink tequila for babies around here. And Miranda says, right, uh, of course you don't. Snake tequila, I'll pass. I generally try not to drink anything with a dead animal floating in it. Nick says, uh, suit yourself. And Miranda says, so, from the beginning, what's happening? And Nick downs his tequila and then stares into space for a long minute, looking pensive. <laughs> Lady K says, I'd like to get a view of those taut abs. It's like, wait, an ab shot, please? <laughs> and he says, all right, Miranda, the simple version is that there's two worlds out there. There's the world of day, the safe and cozy place where everything makes sense. And most people live out their whole lives in that world. And he sets his glass down, his face darkening. And then there's the rest of, there's the world of night. And Miranda says, I'm guessing that one's less, oh, let's see, one, that one's less on the safe and cozy side. Absolutely. Absolutely. One second. <clears throat> oh, was choking on my water there. A little bit. All right. <laughs> Those terms are acceptable. Yes, they are. <laughs> uh. And so Nick says, right in one, that world is full of terrors. Things that go bump and, like, that go bump and then grow teeth out of their goddamn eyeballs. And Miranda says, do you mean that literally? And Nick says, look, I'm not saying there aren't beautiful things living in the shadows, too. There always are. All kinds of supernatural beings live in my world, hidden from human sight by magic. Ooh, my eyes watering now. And you're going to meet a bunch of them, I bet, because this is your world, too, now, Miranda, whether you like it or not. And apparently have lethal Shakespeare creatures, too. Yeah. <laughs> you close your eyes, taking three slow, calming breaths. And Miranda says, Okay, wait, does that mean everything's real? And Miranda says, What about werewolves? And Nick frowns, Yup, bunch of macho assholes. A lot of man jewelry always getting in everyone's faces. You know, bros. Miranda says, I am familiar with bros, yes. Then you know werewolves, he says. That's what I was looking for. Rougarou's just the kind of place that they like to go and start trouble. Count yourself lucky you never made it inside. <laughs> Lady K says, marry me, Nick! <laughs> You give Nick a speculative look, narrowing your eyes at him. And Miranda says, so what about you then? How do you fit into this shadow world? Are you some kind of creature too? And Nick smiles, yeah, I wish. Nothing magical about me, just your average red-blooded American male who's been hanging around monsters a little too long. And Miranda says, well, what does that mean? Nick says, 
It means I'm a night hunter. Somewhere between a bounty hunter and a private eye with a dash of hired muscle. Basically, if you've got a monster problem and you're willing to pay, I'm your guy. Right now, someone's willing to pay me a lot to look after you. And Miranda says, look, I appreciate everything you've done for me so far, but... And Nick says, hey, it's a free country. You want to take your chances on your own? That's up to you. But that thing's still out there, and it's out for your blood. I figure you'll make it an hour, maybe two. And you let out a frustrated sigh. And Miranda says, fine. I guess I could use protection. That thing nearly annihilated me, and there was nothing I could do. And I guess it's probably best if I stick with you for now. Just for a little while, though, until we figure out why that thing is after me. And Nick says, works for me. Step one, we find out what this creature is. Once you learn a thing's name, you can learn its weakness. But you might want to change it to something a little sturdier. And you look down at your clothes still spattered with blood. Everyone could use protection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Miranda says, I don't suppose you happen you'd happen to, to grab my suitcase. And Nick says, sorry, I was a little busy, you know, saving your life. And Nick gets up and walks over to the coat closet. And Nick says, an old friend left behind oh, some of her dear. night country. Now I shall have to well, create a while more back, Martians. That it fit you pretty well. And Miranda says, hmm, I guess I'll have to try it out. Yeah, we'll take it. Looks like a cute outfit. It's a red jacket. Looks like with kind of like scaly, ar you know, s sleeves. And Miranda says, bad ass. And you rejoin Nick. Nick s looks at you, mouth drops, and it's like, wow. Miranda says, wow? Mother of Dragon's jacket. Yeah, right? <laughs> I love sarcasm from L.I.s. Me too. I like I like witty banter. That's kind of like one of the things I really like in an L.I. is that, you know, it's like, all right, they challenge the main character. They challenge the MC. you know. Nick says, Yo, you look pretty killer. And like you might actually live through this. And Miranda says, gee, thanks. And he says, ready to head out. And she says, as I'll ever be. And you follow Nick down a creaky staircase, hearing a gr hearing a growing hubbub as you near street level, where you emerge into a raucous, low-lit bar. And Nick says, "Welcome to the graveyard ship, best damn bar in town." And the owner's a friend. The last upstairs tenants, the last upstairs tenant, abruptly vacated the premises, so he let me move in for cheap. And you look over at the bar where the slim, handsome bartender is having a lively conversation with a burly man and a young man dressed in black. And as you focus on the trio, the air around their faces seems to flicker and swim, revealing... Looks like a blonde-haired man with blue eyes and elf ears. The same rock monster guy you saw earlier. And a woman with like uh, purple and pink hair and she looks her face looks a little pale and Miranda says they're they're not human and Nick says wait you can see them through the glamour and she says the what and he says a glamour it's a spell like magical photoshop makes these folks look human when regular humans look at them if you can see through it that's interesting you sure you're human like 100% sure And Miranda says, where else would I be? I'm a normal girl from a tiny suburb in Wyoming. Let's see, and, Nick, and uh, Nick says, and nothing weird has ever happened to you? Nothing you can't explain? And Miranda says, I mean, I did have this weird dream back in the cab. I was in that graveyard being chased by the monster. And there was this voice that was telling me how to escape. And Nick rubs the back of his neck, shaking his head in frustration. Actually, in confusion, excuse me, in confusion. 
Well, hell, curiouser and curiouser. I guess we'll just have to keep digging. And Nick leads you to the bar, greeting the bartender with a mock salute. How's it hanging, Garrus? And uh, he says, Nick, my mortal! And Nick frowns and says, my man, Garrus, that's my man. And Garrus says, oh, close enough, don't fuss. And who's this fresh blood we've you've brought us? She looks like one of your lot in all that leather. Wow. <laughs> and Miranda says, uh, thanks? And Miranda, uh, and Nick says, this is Miranda, she's with me, so keep an eye on her, will you? I need to make a few calls. Oh, and fun fact, she can see your true faces. No idea how. Be right back. And the monster says, She can what? And Nick walks to the other side of the bar and hunkers down in the corner booth. And Garrus leans on his bar, on the bar, over crossed arms, grinning rakishly at you. And Garrus says, Lovely to meet you, and may I introduce to you my companions, the stone troll Crom, brooding and tender of heart. I'm not brooding, he says. <laughs> and Garrus says, You are. You are. And this is Ivy, undead human, our lady of sterling intellect. And Ivy rolls her glowing red eyes good naturedly at Garrus's teasing. She says, Well, don't mind our heat. He's just extra, even if, even for one of the foe, and one of the fae, excuse me, one of the fae. And Garrus says, indeed. And what about you, fresh blood? Cat got your tongue? And Miranda says, sorry, it's just uh, a lot to take in. Yesterday I had uh, no idea people like you even existed. Crom says, we're not as scary as we look, honest. Ivy says, he speaks the truth. Beneath Crom's craggy exterior lies a big, snuggly teddy bear. And Garrus says, well, we're open books, love. What do you want to know? Hmm. I think I want to know about Ivy first. And you look over at Ivy, who smiles at you, her eyes glowing like embers. So you're a... Options were goth and zombie. I went with goth. Garrus in an English accent. <laughs> Crom for president. Yeah. I like Ivy too, Eric. I like Ivy too. <laughs> and you know... I never really fit into that scene when I was alive, Ivy says. And I've been told I embraced the darkness a little too cheerfully for the down-on-life aesthetic. Eric likes all the ladies. <laughs> and Miranda says, so what's it like, the whole undead thing? And Ivy says, I like to think of myself as mostly dead. And Miranda says, noted. Anyway, you seem pretty upbeat for a mostly dead person. And Ivy says, oh, I am. It's basically everything I've ever wanted. Cool glowing eyes, extremely diverse social circle, and best of all, I get to look this good until the end of time. And Ivy says, you know, unless someone chops my head off or whatever. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> a positive way of looking at that, you know. Miranda says, yeah, uh, sounds great. I want to know about Crom now. Crom catches your eye and gives you a small smile. When he speaks... Crom, catch when he speaks, his voice is deep, yet somehow timid and shy. How are you holding up? I know all this can be pretty overwhelming, Crom says. Okay, I will. I will. I will, Diamond. <laughs> I think I saw you yesterday, actually, outside the Tipsy Unicorn? You did? Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't scare you. And Miranda says, of course not! 
Well, maybe a little, but that's not your fault. I just didn't know what was going on. And Miranda says, so you're a... Crom says, stone troll. It's, um, one of the lesser known varieties. And Miranda says, well, that would explain it, though. You're definitely not what I'd expect. Awake the Ted crossover. And Crom says, what do you mean? And Miranda says, well, I thought trolls were scary. But you don't seem like you spend much time lurking under bridges at all. Crom says, honestly, I just never did that well with Dark and Dank. Too liable to catch a chill. And Miranda says, that's very sensible of you. And Miranda says, so what do trolls do? And Kara says, well, in Crom's case, work on his pretentious novel, drink too much Chardonnay, and get all melancholy thinking about his ex-boyfriend. And Crom says, hey! High school, mon high school story monster high edition. <laughs> that would be fun. And Gareth says, I tease, darling. You're an absolute delight. And your novel is uh, a novel. Did I miss the interaction? I didn't see a diamond thing. Oh, did I miss it? Oh, was that the choice? I thought you meant like there was a diamond choice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad. I thought it was like a like a diamond choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Crop says, well, that's fair. I want to know about Garrus. And you turn to Garrus who gives you a lazy wink. And Miranda says, so you're a fae? And Garrus says, I prefer fair folk myself. I'm also a passable dancer, a dreadful musician, and an excellent mixologist, if I do say so. Speaking of, you seem like you could use a drink, my mortal. On the house, of course. And Miranda says, a drink? Yes, please. <laughs> We're not passing up a drink. She says, I'd love one. And with a flourish, Garrus sets a frothy, swirling cocktail in front of you. And even, even tied ambrosia to cure your woes. And it's a very, very colorful concoction. So we're going to drink it bottoms up. And you pick the chilled glass up and take a sweet, cold sip. And Miranda says, ooh. And a giddy sense of euphoria rushes through your blood, warming your belly and giving you goosebumps. And Miranda says, that is amazing. Garrus, what's in it? It's an old fae recipe passed down through the generations. And Miranda says, So, Nick told me there are a lot of uh, non-humans in New Orleans? And Gareth says, Oh, yes, of course. There are creatures all over the world. The vampire glitterati of New York. The werewolf dynasties of Texas. Hmm. Do you think the, the vampire glitterati of New York is our friends from... You know, from Bloodbound? We just we just survived nearly being killed. Drinks it is. Oh yeah. Brown eyed beauty says I I'll take one of those Garrus drinks. <laughs> but snakes, snakes. <laughs> I, I I I I didn't nearly die right there, right? Yeah. I know one particular vamp is. Is snake to kill a vegan, Eric? <laughs> I don't think so. You find out mystical people exist, so you definitely need a drink. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely the Bloodbound crew. That's what I was thinking when I read that. And Garrus says, but this city is unlike any other. The Crescent City is where all the misfits go. The outcasts and exiles and fugitives. And Miranda says, well, what about you? Where did you run from? Hey, Caden. And Garrus says, I hail from the Fey realm, as do all Fey who walk in this world. My kind of a hidden colony here, tucked away safe from mortal eyes. And Garrus trails off, an almost wistful look in his eye. And Nick wanders back over to the bar, a dark look on his face. Yeah, I love the Bloodbound books too. <laughs> 
Sounds like I should have been sent to New Orleans long ago. Yeah. Nick wanders back over to the bar and a dark a dark look on his face. And Miranda says, any luck? I could definitely use some good news. And Nick frowns, checked in with a few contacts, tried to call in some favors. No joy. But I drew up a little sketch of our mystery beast. Maybe our peerless creaturetologist. Creature... Creature... Oh boy, creatureologist? Yeah, there we go. Creatureologist. <laughs> I can't say that. Could take a little look-see. And Nick holds out a piece of paper to Ivy, who gives him a flat look. And Ivy says, those puppy dog eyes can get you nowhere, buddy. You know I don't work for free any more than you do. Tree is the first vampy that came to mind. This is one of the best they ever wrote. Cal is still one of my favorite allies. Mm -hmm. I, I met Cal. I, uh, when, when we started the book, I was on... Um, well, I had left off at the end of chapter 5. So it's, I'm reading all... Basically, it's, it's all fresh to me. I didn't get very far, so... And Nick's like, Ivy? And Ivy says, nope! Payment first, consult after. You know what I need. Nick says, this is extortion. Ivy says, this is capitalism, baby. I'm all for Camilla. Camilla's fun. <laughs> Camilla was the homie for real, for real. <laughs> yes. And Nick sighs heavily, running both hands through his hair. And Nick says, okay, fair enough. I'll get right on that. Fingers crossed for a quiet one this time. And Miranda says, a quiet one? What does that mean? <laughs> Eric, why you gotta call me out like that? Why, why you gotta do that? Why you gotta do that? <laughs> Nick says, hunting down Ivy's payment can get a little eerie sometimes. And Miranda says, would it help if I went with you? Not that I know anything about anything you do, but I want to help. And Nick says, nah, it's no way. It's too dangerous. I'm getting paid to protect you, not put you in danger. <laughs> well, I finished chapter five. I was going to start chapter six. So no, I got five chapters in. I got five chapters in. Okay. To be fair, it's not because I didn't like it. It's just because I was reading a lot of books around that same time and I was kind of hoping for more like you know more bloodbound stuff so yeah that's what happened there every time you mention stopping a book it is that chapter five I know I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry Kane says ooh the black Nick is super cute I have to go back and choose him oh yeah they're all pretty good looking but yeah and Miranda says, I can handle myself. And Nick says, you literally don't know anything. And Miranda says, I know that you're supposed to protect me, not abandon me in some random bar. And Gareth says, I'll have you know, this is an extremely nice random bar. And Nick gives you a long, searching look. And for a moment, he looks almost sad. And the expression is gone. Nick says, it's been a long time since I had someone watching my back out there. <laughs> First of all, sassy Nick. <laughs> Pipe down, young man. We got this. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> and Nick says, it's useful, especially for a job like this. Going with Nick will give you a chance to explore a haunted graveyard and get closer to Nick. Ooh. We like getting closer to Nick. <laughs> Okay, I don't know about y'all, but I like Garrus. <laughs> I like Garrus. I think he's super cute. Oh, you love the name Miranda? Well, uh, Twirl Legends there in the chat was the one who named her. So I went with his name, his name, uh, his name suggestion. So far, I've really actually, so far, I would say I've taken the uh, view, the chat suggestions for just about all of our main characters. I think except the first one. The first one I named Cat. <laughs> and 
And then I kind of wished I didn't, you know. But it turned out pretty good. I forget, is there only three allies in this book? I think so. Oh, okay. Uh, Cal, Catherine, Nick, Vera. Four. Ooh. Oh, boy. Four allies, no random hookups. Pout. Boo, pout. <laughs> Just kidding. Four allies is pretty... That's pretty generous for a book. <laughs> but you can kiss a couple people in certain situations. But you can kiss the Frost King. Oh, okay. And Miranda says, I'm in. Let's do this. Diamond sa uh, says, I chose Vera as my ally in my playthroughs. Oh, yeah? I like Vera so far. And Nick says, right on. And Nick pats down the pockets of his coat and satisfied beckons you out the door of the bar. Sometime later. I like, uh, the, Eric says, I like that it is two male and two female. I like equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Options. Options are good. So sometime later, we're back in the graveyard, and you follow Nick through the iron gates of a mist-shrouded graveyard, looming with crypts and statues. And Miranda says, so what exactly are we doing here? I wonder how good Shipwreck will be. I'm pretty nervous about it. I am excited about it actually. Um did you get did you get to see uh the like kind of the sneak peek of the char like uh the characters and stuff on um on the Play Choices Twitter, Caden? Cuz I think I saw that you're on Twitter. Variety, the spice of life, indeed. <laughs> You go with Catherine? Oh, okay. And Nick says, so what do you think we're doing in the deserted graveyard in the middle of the night? We're hunting ghosts. And Miranda says, did you say ghosts? Who are you going to call? Night Hunters! <laughs> That's good! <laughs> Nick says, yep, already regretting bringing you along. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> How do you catch a ghost exactly? Are butterfly nets involved? <laughs> and Nick, <laughs> Nick says, what do you even think a ghost is? Just just keep your eyes and ears peeled. We find a ghost, I'll do the hard part. You and Nick thread your way toward the old gravestones. The silence stretches and you notice a pensive look on Nick's face. And Miranda says, a penny for your thoughts? And Nick says, just thinking, it's been a while since I had company out here. I usually fly solo. And Miranda says, so how long have you been doing this? And Nick lets out a low laugh, rubbing his stubble chin. Nick says, feels like forever. This gig has a way of creeping into your bones. And Miranda says, but you must have gotten your start sometime. Had a normal life before? And Nick says, not really. My dad was a night hunter, one of the best. And he raised me up into the life. Taught me everything I know. <laughs> you know, killing monsters, saving people, the family business. Did, but it's been a while since they've uh, done an adventure and I don't want them to oh yeah it'll be fine it'll be fine <laughs> um, there's gonna be a few folks streaming it over the weekend I will be streaming it on Saturday here in our in our channel 
um, along with the unexpected heiress. So if you want to pop in on Saturday, again, it's another another awesome stream where uh, Choices has partnered with our channel. So thank you for that. And, um, you know, it'll be a good time. And uh, I know uh, there's some other folks that will be streaming it tomorrow. Um, t yeah, just copying you. <laughs> sure. Sure I am. <laughs> And Miranda says, was? He doesn't hunt anymore? And Nick shifts uncomfortably, setting his jaw. Nick says, he died about seven years ago. And you touch Nick's arm softly, and he gives you a surprised look, but he doesn't pull away. And Miranda says, I'm sorry. It must have been so hard to lose him so young. And Nick says, yeah, it was uh, rough. And sometimes I think a lot of things would be different if he was still around. Just then, the moon slips out from behind thick clouds, and a low moan mo sounds from a nearby statue. Oh. And Nick says, look alive, newbie, because something out here is definitely not. A churning black apparition boils up from the ground beside the statue, eyes glowing inside its featureless black face. Ooh, and it's a ghost. And Nick says, go time. Nick springs up, whipping out a silver flask. Ominous, immune, immundus, spiritus ominous. And the ghost says, woo. Wailing, the ghost streaks into Nick in a dark blur, knocking him backward. That sounds like a werewolf. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nick says, huh? And Nick slams against a nearby sculpture, dropping the flask, and he crumples to the ground with a gasp. And Miranda shouts, Nick! And before you could do anything, the spirit turns in the air, howling toward you. Oh. And I got to fight. Miranda says, take this, you! And Nick shouts, rookie, no! You lunge forward, fist pulled back for a punch, and the spirit passes right through you. Your whole body flares with icy pain like the blood just froze in your veins. And Miranda's like, Ugh. And you collapse to the ground, your whole body shaking violently as cold fire seems to scorch you from the inside. And Nick says, did you seriously? just try to punch a ghost. Miranda says, Sh shut up! Pushing yourself to your feet, you eye the ghost nervously as it swirls through the air, turning for another attack. Brown-eyed beauty's like, I mean, Nick, you were on the ground. <laughs> exactly. Ha ha ha! Yeah. And Nick says, here it comes. A little help here. Miranda says, right. I'll uh, grab the flask. Throws everyone under the bus. <laughs> Heart hammering, you dart over to where you saw the flask roll behind a tombstone. Miranda, hurry up. And Miranda says, working on it. And you turn to see the ghost swooping down on Nick again. And it's eerie howls piercing the air. <laughs> the ghost screams and Nick says the flask now and you snatch up the flask and lob it over to Nick Nick says ominous legio diabolica adira amiste and the ghost is like ah uh -huh. <laughs> the ghost moans one last time and is, as its form begins to stretch and tear pulled into the flask like water down a drain and Nick screws on the top, shoves the flask back into his pocket. Breathless, you grin at each other. And Miranda says, did you really just trap a ghost in a flask? Classy. And Nick shrugs, looking a little sheepish. And he says, I couldn't find my sacred amulet. And Miranda says, well, whatever works, right? That was amazing. And I should hug him. Definitely. 
Impulsively, you wrap your arms around Nick's neck, and for a moment, Nick stands still, and then he hugs you back, and you feel his heart racing through your chest. The flirt is strong with these two, indeed. <laughs> Easy there. Not a big deal, but I think I may have cracked a rib. Cheek's suddenly hot. You pull away from him. And Miranda says, oh, sorry. Hope he doesn't grab the wrong flask when he wants a drink. Right? Lady Key's like, squeeze him! <laughs> and Nick says, no worries, occupational hazard. Honestly, I'd feel weird if something wasn't hurting after a job like this. And Miranda says, well, should we head back to your place, get you patched up? Get you patched up? <laughs> and Nick says, not just yet. Time to hook Ms. Ivy up with her payment. Ooh, look at this. So it's uh, looks like a library or something, a very ornate room. Uh, yeah, it is a library. It has a big, big uh, globe. You know, one of those, like, uh, you know, it has, like a, like, a star chart or something on it. So that's cool. I mean, they do call it spirits. <laughs> oh, brown-eyed beauty, I think, you're, I think your bad jokes are rivaling my own. <laughs> oh, jeez. You follow Nick to a nondescript house on the edge of town. Inside is a huge private library stacked with beautifully organized tomes. Miranda says, it's like a bookworm's dream. What is this place? And it, Ivy emerges from behind one of the shelves carrying a massive stack of books. And Ivy says, greetings, mortals. Welcome to Shay, Ivy. And she sets the books down on a nearby table and looks at Nick pointedly. You bring it? Yep, one restless spirit bottled up for your convenience. And he tosses the flask to Ivy, who unscrews the top, tips it into her mouth, downing the swirling black mist in one gulp. Right, whoa. And Ivy smiles. Hmm, that was a lively one. Miranda says, you just ate a ghost? That's fascinating. What do they taste like? And Ivy says, never really thought about it, but a valid question. Sort of airy, cold, tormented, like a meringue with issues. <laughs> it's a dream home for real, right? I would love to have, I would love to have like a room with a really big library. What would, if, okay, if you had your own like, huge library or a, like a, a, a is there like a dream room that you would want to have like in your in a in a dream in your dream house like what is the room that you would have to have in your dream home for me it would have to be like a little you know like a movie theater or something where i could play games and watch movies and like have you know theater size seats and i would have like a whole concession stand I saw it something like that on like my lottery dream house or something on HGTV once. And it was just like, I can out, I could live. I could just stay here. I, I don't need to go anywhere else. I can have my own popcorn machine. I have like a candy dispenser. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I would just stay here. You know, I love that type of stuff. Caden says, I'm an avid reader. I can't live with, I can't live without books. That's right. Cookbooks and spell books and Sanskrit. Ooh. Oh, Brown Eyed Beauty says the Sun Moon Room from the Elementalist. Oh, yes. That was a cool room. Brandon says an armory. Of course you do. Of course you'd say that. <laughs> With a nice, uh, you know, computer for your uh, Rainbow Six Siege stuff. <laughs> Reaching into his pocket, Nick pulls out the sketch of the creature and hands it to Ivy. And Ivy says, ooh, you weren't kidding. This little lovely is severely hideous. Let me take a look. Turning to the shelves, Ivy runs her fingers over the gilded spines and occasionally pulling books down to leaf through them. Ivy says, maybe? 
Nope, eyes are wrong for a ghoul. Too scrawny to be a bone troll. Could be a lich gone wrong, I suppose. But, damn, this is a tricky one. I'm going to have to go look in the cellar. Too many things that, <laughs> that need their own homes. One room is not enough. Olivia Navrakis would be proud. Would be proud. Yes. Yeah, but like, yeah, m definitely a movie theater room, um, and uh, a big library with like comfy chairs, comfy chairs all over the place. No bean bags though. I'm too old for that. <laughs> but maybe bean bag chairs for kiddos or something. You know, if young youngins come over and visit or something. But yeah, definitely a big. I would have to have big comfy chairs and lots of books in like a fireplace or something for ambience. <laughs> you know. My knees just cracked at the bitch of a bean bag. <laughs> right? You worked in the theater for a decade. I could skip that one. Oh, fishy. Oh. <laughs> Kane says, I run the concession stand and catering at the event center where I live. I wholeheartedly agree. Oh. That smell of popcorn. Oh my goodness, it's so good. <laughs> the date, date says, oh my god, after years of sl saying Olivia's name wrong, I realized it's a Nefrakis. I always read it as Necravis. Oh, and I think I like that better, to be honest. 19 still can't do beanbag chairs. Hey, that's all right. <laughs> you know, I, I had a friend a long time ago. I was like, maybe in junior high or something, who had a beanbag chair. And every time I went to her house, I always sat in it. You know, I just thought it was so dang cool. But would I sit in a beanbag chair now? Not unless it was like, you know, waist high, so I didn't have to like get up from off the floor. <laughs> yeah, that getting up off the floor business? Nah. <laughs> and Miranda says, need any help? I says, oh, you're sweet, but there are some uh, things in the cellar that don't take too kindly to strangers. And Miranda says, well, what kind of things? And I says, dead things. Anyway, feel free to look around. Back in a jiff. I'd make a beanbag bag chair explode. I'm scared that I'll get stuck in a beanbag chair. Exactly, me too. <laughs> you have exploded one? Wow, love. <laughs> And Ivy bustles off, leaving you and Nick among the towering bookshelves. Nick slaps you on the back and heads for a case of antique weapons. Nick says, careful what you stick your nose in. I'd bet at least half of the books in here are cursed. And Miranda looks shocked. She says, great, awesome. Sighing, you look, to, look around the vaulted room and your eyes fall on a thick leather bound tome sitting on a nearby table. And you look closer at the book. This looks harmless enough. And you brush off the cracked leather cover, flipping it open to the first yellowed page. And it says, From the veritable and staunch accounts of Sir Nathaniel Rourke, valiant hunter, a beast, most eldritch, and arcane. Miranda starts to read what, what's in the book. November 28th, 1645. I had been sailing for a fortnight on its trail before I finally encountered my loathsome quarry. The seals were roiling, the skies curdling gray and storm racked above me. And as you read on, you can almost feel the rain pouring down on you, smell the salt in the air, feel the bold creak underfoot. And then she reads for it further and says, When my vessel listed starboard, I thought it was from a gust of wind, but then a glistening tentacle, w wide around as an oak, came questing upon the deck. <laughs> Caden says, mm -hmm, Cursed rid literature, the best kind. I know, right? Miranda says, Holy crap, is this guy serious? Tutorial. If you keep reading, you'll have a chance to step into the boots of a 17th century monster hunter and battle a kraken oh heck yeah let's go i want to battle a kraken the tentacle withdraws slithering back into the briny waters and you spring to your feet waving for your manservant to take the helm sir nathaniel says quickly bosworth the hour of glory is nigh upon us 
Salt spray mingled with the relentless lash of wind, or excuse me, of rain whips around against your cheeks as you dash toward the railing. Scourge of the seas, mine own white will, show your foul visage once more if you dare. And oh, I hope you dare. Oh, <laughs> for long moments, the sea only uh, churns only of its own volition, frothing and foaming like a l horse's lather. And you see nothing stirring beneath the angry spoon. Then, with a tremendous roar, like a hundred thousand death nails ringing at once, or as one, the gargantuan squid breaks the surface. And it's a kraken, and it's roaring, and it's red, and it has red eyes, and it's like really mad. And it lifts a massive tentacle, crusty barnacles clinging to its suckers, readying to strike. And Sir Nathaniel looks very determined. He says, I shall brace for impact. And you drop to one knee, teeth clenched, bracing for the monster's blow. And Sir Nathaniel kind of, you know. And it brings its mighty tentacle down upon the deck, showering you with slime and splinters of shattered wood. And the kraken growls again, or roars again rather, and your vessel heaves upon the colossal impact, listing madly to and fro, but you hold fast. Above, the monster rears up, fixing you in its gleaming, beady gaze. It windmills its flailing arms, beating them upon the angry water. What would that even sound like? Roar! <laughs> Calabari, anyone? Brown eyed beauty says. <laughs> Eric says, uh, endless summer flashbacks hitting me. Mm -hmm. Unbowed by its fury, you blink away the sting of sea and rain and stagger to your feet. Sir Nathaniel says, You would lay a tentacle upon my ship, Marine Abomination? I will show you what it is to stand against a hunter of the night. Teeth bared, you reach for the belt above your waist and withdraw your trusty cutlass from its sheath. Sword sits, excuse me, steel singing against leather. And you will come to know my blade's cane voice, beast, and you will learn to fear it. And rumbling, the Kraken surges forward and tangles its limbs all around your vessel. The deck quakes and bucks beneath your feet. And it makes a noise. And its grotesque head looms ever closer, blotting out the lightning-ribbon sky. So near you can see yourself reflected in the glassy, fearsome orbs of its eyes. Sir Nathaniel says, Have at you, foul beast! And you slash at its eyes. Bellowing a war cry, you charge forward, swinging your blade. Sir Nathaniel says, May my visage be the last you ever see. Sensing danger, the Kraken seeks to unknot itself from the hull. Skrrr! But it's grasped onto your ship too tightly and cannot free itself in time. As Sir Nathaniel screams, and you lunge forward, slashing the cutlass across its eyes. Skrrr! I'm gonna guess that's what it said. Eh, the Kraken made some really nasty noise when you scratched it. <laughs> it's, it thrashes its colossal head back and forth, clear ichor seeping from its eyes. It abruptly releases the ship, diving beneath the surface. Sir Nathaniel, huzzah! You will harry our fleet no longer, not without your eyes. And you flip the journal closed, and your heart still juddering with adrenaline. When you lick your lips, your dry lips, they taste like... A little like salt. Miranda says, that was intense. It almost felt like shaking your head, you set the book back down on the table. And a metal door clangs shut nearby. And a moment later, Ivy pops out from behind a shelf. Ivy says, Jackpot! I think I found your homicidal friend. And Nick hurries over. As Ivy heaves an iron-bound tome onto the reading table and flips it open. And Ivy says, oh, I, th I think, oh, yeah, kind of like, oh, no. Oh, no. Ryan says, did you find it? Ivy says, I did. Unfortunately, this is bad, buds. Real bad. And Nick says, spill, Ivy. What are we dealing with? 
A blood wreath. Nick says, What? No freaking way! I thought they were extinct! And Ivy says, No, just incredibly rare. It's actually kind of a miracle that you've run into one. I wish I'd been there to see it. How big were the claws? I hear a blood wraith could tear through solid steel like... And Nick says, Ivy, focus. Ivy says, right, right. A blood wraith is a summoned familiar. It can only be made by a seriously advanced necromancer from the bones of a persecuted witch. And Miranda frowns and says, that sounds distinctly unpleasant. Ivy says, to say the least. A blood wraith is the supernatural world's perfect assassin. Completely single-minded, also completely ruthless. A relentless killing machine that will stop at nothing until it's claimed its target. Possibly the deadliest creature in the book. And that's saying something around here. And Miranda says, great, so how do I escape it? And Ivy slowly closes the book and meets your eyes. Y you can't. Either you kill it, or it kills you. Why is the Blood Wraith after you, and how will you stop it? Keep playing to find out. And we'll continue on. And I'll just need to take another break. Just a couple minutes. And then we'll continue on Chapter 3, which will be our last chapter for the evening. I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Our stream is... Uh, you know, done in partnership with uh, Choices and Pixelberry. So thanks so much for, you know, partnering with us for this stream. It's awesome. Yikes, yikes, triple yikes. <laughs> Jason Born of the Undead. Oof. Ouch. Ouch. Brown Eyed Beauty. Ouch. <laughs> oh. Rip VIP. Ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, I'll be back in like a couple minutes. Hang out, and uh, we'll continue on the st with the story.
back. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining, what's up? I'm Martian Cat. This is uh, Nightbound from Play Choices. Or from, yeah, yeah, it's Play Choices. Choices is the app. Play at Play Choices is their Twitter. I will also be putting these up on YouTube. I have to, I, I have the other, t the, like our last two sessions to put up. They're already on YouTube. I just have to like do some, some editing stuff to them before they're up. So all of wishful thinking, it will be up on YouTube. Um, Perfect Match didn't make it up there because I, I ended up missing downloading some of those. So we didn't get Perfect Match, but we did get It Lives Beneath also on YouTube. So it's good stuff. This is chapter three of Nightbound. One second. And it's called A Den of Wolves. Caden, thank you so much. Caden says, these are the most entertaining streams. I really appreciate that very much. Thank you. morning after your grim consultation with Ivy, you and Nick hit the city streets to track down the murderous blood wreath. Weaving through crowds of tourists, you check your phone for any news of Vera, who you haven't seen since the attack. And Miranda says, I just don't get it. Nothing comes up when I search for her name. No social media at all. It's like she's a ghost. And Nick says, you sure you didn't imagine this chick? Yeah, the hunt begins. I like it. And Miranda says, Vera was definitely real and a friend. Nick says, look, I get it. You're worried about her. Cool. But right now, you're the one being hounded by an undead killing machine. Worry about yourself. And Miranda says, about that, do you have a plan? And Nick shrugs, hooking his thumbs into his pockets. I'm more of a winged kind of guy. And Miranda says, you seem weirdly calm about that. Trust me, I'll figure it out. Always do. And Miranda says, I just feel way out of my depth here. I mean, I'm meeting trolls and zombies and there's a blood wraith gunning for me. I'm not exactly equipped to protect myself from stuff like that, you know. Nick says, oh dear, now I shall have to create more Martians. Lucky for you, I am. And Miranda says, and I appreciate that. I just hate feeling so helpless. It's not like me. And Nick says, I get that. You want to be able to look out for yourself in a tight spot. And he looks at you thoughtfully and then sighs. And Nick says, all right, maybe I'll regret this, but if you want, I can teach you some moves. Believe it or not, I'm not a bad teacher. Tutorial, practice hand-to-hand -hand combat with Nick to sharpen your skills and get a little closer to him. Yeah, let's do it. I'd love a lesson. <laughs> okay. Martin says, that would be great. I mean, I took Aikido lessons as a kid, but it's been years since I set foot inside a dojo. Nick says, yeah, no. I'm not teaching you any fancy martial arts. That stuff won't fly against nine out of ten monsters anyway. <laughs> you know I was coming over here. You know I was going to take this scene. So what do I need? And Nick says, to be ready for anything, including fight and dirty. A block down, Nick ducks into a narrow, dim alleyway. You follow, looking around uncertainly. Nick's, 
Oh, I like the music here. I don't think I've heard this before. This is pretty cool. I like it. And Nick says, first, let's work on that stance. Then he walks around you in a half circle, sweeping a critical gaze over your fo form. I have over 6,000 diamonds, so I never think about it. What? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of diamonds. Oh, my God. That's a lot of diamonds. <laughs> and he walks around you in a half circle, sweeping a critical gaze over your form. Nick says, nice straight posture, real alert, but not too stiff. Soften up your knees a little and shift those feet apart. Did they? You know what? A lot of that, I never actually got to hear the music. It's, you're, it's, it sounds funny. I have to go to bed since I work at 6.30 a.m. Woof. All right. All right, Eric. Thanks for hanging out and staying up. You know, staying up late. I appreciate it. Sleep well. I didn't know they used it in the Royal Romance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nix's monster comes barreling at you. and Don't want to be toppling over like a bowling pin. Miranda says, I definitely do not. You readjust your stance, rearranging your weight into a relaxed but vigilant posture. A flush of pride sweeps over you at Nick's approving nod. Yeah, I usually try to like be in the chapter while like I'm on while I'm on my breaks and stuff. That way you can hear the music. But I could probably find a way to you know, get some type of music on here if I if I if I ask nice and stuff. Nick says, "Well, how about that? You're not half bad. Now that we got that squared, what do you want to learn next?" I can't see why you could. I stayed up until the stream ends, and then it's off to Dreamland. Oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. I'm guessing where are we at. Probably a little over 30 minutes, I think. Miranda says, I want to learn to defend. And Miranda says, the best offense is a good defense, right? Nick says, that's what they say. First and the, the first and best way to block a punch is to avoid it in the first place. And Miranda says, so you're saying just duck? Nick says, a smart fighter is not going to field a blow if they can dodge instead. Here. Keep your eyes on me. And you nod, fixing your gaze on Nick. And he shifts from side to side, moving fluidly, his loosely curled fist bobbing by his face. <laughs> Raven. <laughs> oh, stop. And Miranda says, okay, and now? That's the Johnny Cage defense. Oh, no. Nick says, just keep watching circle each other and you notice start to notice the small movements of his eyes the almost imperceptible shifting of weight from one foot to the other not a hard job I'd watch him all day I know right <laughs> uh, Miranda says wow I think and before you can finish his fist jabs out exactly where you anticipated and you snap to the left evading the blow and Nick smiles and he says would you look at that got it in one and Miranda says that was almost kind of easy it's like I could feel what you were planning. And Nix is pretty cool, huh? Kind of a rush when it feels like you burrowed right into your opponent's head. Monsters give themselves away if you know what to look for. People, too. And Miranda says, I want to learn to attack. Sitting duck isn't really my style. If I'm going to be in a fight, I want to do some damage. And Nix is a woman after my own heart. Then he reaches for your hands, firmly positioning them up front of your chest oh dear now i shall have to create more martians okay no dumb amateur thumb breakage on my watch you'll want to curl your thumb over your knuckles let's see those fists and miranda says like this and nix is good now footwork dominant foot goes back angled out that's how you'll fuel the punch from your hip and he watches narrowly as you slide a foot back and then sets his hands lightly on your hips angling them and Nix is feet a little further apart. You don't want to. You want don't want to be too narrow or too wide. 
Keep those forearms vertical. Elbows tucked. Abs nice and tight. Hands up to your guard. Hands up to guard your face. I'm a one. <laughs> right, Lady K? <laughs> and Miranda says, this is surprisingly complex. And Nick says, there's a recipe to the perfect punch. Can't wing it until you got the fundamentals down. Now comes the fun part. You're going to pivot your hip forward and jab with your fist. And he holds up one hand and you pivot your hips, channeling all your strength into a quick jab that slams into his palm. And Miranda says, HA! And Nick smiles back, Damn, Tiger, that had some fire in it. And Miranda says, Stronger than I look, I guess. And he takes a step back, cracking his knuckles and grinning crookedly at you. And Nick says, So what do you think so far? And Miranda says, I kind of love it. And you grin back at him, your heart still galloping. I have to admit, it's pretty exhilarating. Gotta say, you're taking it better than I thought. Color me impressed. And Miranda says, well, like you said, this is just the basics, right? And Nick says, still, I can already tell you've got a knack for it. it. Makes my job a hell of a lot easier. Let's give it one more go before we head out. Put it all together, you ready? <laughs> we have abs, yes we do. <laughs> well, I don't, but she does. You readjust your feet, sink into your knees, lifting up your fist. And Miranda says, bring it on. Nick holds off for a moment, dark eyes flashing with anticipation as he bobs and weaves and then strikes out at you whip fast. And I should duck and throw a punch. Narrowly your eye, narrowing your eyes, you gauge the trajectory of the blow and duck hard before it connects with your cheek. And as Nick pulls back, preparing to launch another blow, you pivot, throw a punch at him. And Nick says, now we're cooking. And he deftly slings his body to the side and his hand snakes out to capture your wrist as your punch travels past him. And he whirls around, deftly pinning you against the alley wall with his forearm. Miranda says, hey, no fair, we didn't even cover this. And Nick says, you think things that go bump in the night are inclined to play fair, rookie? And Nick leans in, pressing you against the wall with his body. And he says, you let your guard down for one second, make one wrong move, and just like that. He tilts his face a shade closer to yours until you can see his pupils expand in the alley's dim light. And Miranda says, Nick? And then he snaps playfully at your neck. <laughs> Bleeding out of the jugular. That's how a vamp would have done it, or a ghoul, or pretty much anything looking down, looking to chow down on you. And Miranda says, you seem way too cheerful about the prospect of something eating me. And Nick says, the joy of teaching, that's all. He releases his hold, and you push away from the wall, dusting off your clothes. Nick says, look, rookie. A monster won't cut you any slack, which means I can't either. It's not the vamps you gotta worry about, it's the chupacabras. <laughs> what? And you glare at him a moment longer, and then give him a grudging nod. Nick is such a bonehead! <laughs> And Miranda says, you're right, I need to be able to hold my own. And I'm pretty lucky to have you around to teach me. And Nick says, and watch your back. Remember, you won't ever be out there alone. I got you. And Miranda says, hey, there's a lot worse things than tough love, right? And Nick says, damn right there are. And pretty much all of them are roaming this town right now. So we should get a move on. Miranda says, yeah, probably. Thanks for this, though. I feel, well, not ready, but not totally helpless. And Nick says, I'll take it. Nick heads back out onto the sunlit, busy street with you on his heels, and you blink against the sudden, glaring return of daylight. And Miranda says, so what do we do next, then, besides not dying? And 
Phoenix as well before we can kill the Blood Wraith, we're going to need to find it, preferably before it finds you. For that, we'll need Hunter Sage. Miranda says, Hunter Sage? And Nick says, a magic herb, real rare, hard to cultivate. Burning it will guide you to whatever you're looking for. Kind of like a dousing rod, but for creatures. And Miranda says, well, so where do we get some? This doesn't seem like the kind of thing you just pick up from Whole Foods. <laughs> and Nick says, not likely, no. But lucky for us, I know a guy. And Miranda says, of course you do. Nick leads you to a tacky souvenir shop and pushes open the door. And you step inside, gaze skimming over the cheap carnival masks, sequin t-shirts, and fake skeletons hanging on the wall. Distracted, you bump right into a woman with wild hair and a tired look on her face. And Miranda says, oh, hey! Oh, she's pretty. She says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, are, are you, did I hurt you? I need me some of that. <laughs> And Miranda says, um, no, just a little bump, I'm fine. She goes, oh, good. I was just worried. Sometimes harm is such an accidental thing, and one never really knows. And she trails off, her forehead creasing with vague consternation as she stares into space. And Nick says, lady, are you okay? Hmm, oh, yes, just, uh, busy. Must get back to work. So much to do. Seraphina vibes. Yep. Hefting her shopping bag, the woman drifts out of the door without saying goodbye. Nick says, I swear, half the people in this town are a card short. Miranda says, must be something in the water or the hurricanes. As you approach the counter, the handsome young man behind it gives Nick a friendly wave. Nick! Comment le l'affaire, bruh? Good to see you back out on our fair streets. Hey, Luke! Yeah, had to lay low for a while after the whole Jimbo thing. Got a new gig now. And Luke glances at you, winking mischievously. Th that what the kids are calling it these days? Mighty fine one as gigs go. Quick thought, who would win a fight, Dracula or Lucifer? Lucifer? <laughs> like, is that a question? Like, is that even a question? <laughs> Lemmy! <laughs> Miranda says, thanks. We're here on business. You cross your arms over your chest, glancing at Nick. I'm Miranda. Nick's just showing me the ropes. We're interested in your merchandise. And Luke says, that's so. Nick says, it is. We've got a creature problem, Luke, a bad one. And the cheer fades from Luke's face, and he slides out from behind the counter to flip over the clothes sign on the shop door. <laughs> I'm not biased. I have to think about that, you know? It's like Lucifer, literal angel. He could, he could take out Dracula. <laughs> Luke says, well, why don't we head to the back? And you and Nick follow Luke to the back of the store where he unlocks a discreet looking door and swings it open. You see a room with all kinds of stuff. There's like, you know, vials and t hourglasses and you know, books and stuff in a, in a case is like a mirror and a, you know, a crystal ball and a, a ink, ink bottle with a quill coming out of it. There's a bookshelf behind the counter with different little tchotchkes and stuff on it. And Miranda says, whoa! And the back room is filled, is packed with uh, jars filled with herbs and powders and crystals. A glass counter holds shining weapons and strange glinting jewelry. A fantasy lover's den. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I just stumbled into Diagon Alley. Make yourself at home, Cher. 
Let me know if anything catches your eye. A little lightheaded from the thick incense in the air, you approach the shelves for a closer look at the labels. Tell me about the ill luck bleed. You bend over the glass counter to examine a short, gleaming knife with a translucent blade and a pearly handle. Miranda says, this is beautiful. What's it made of? And Luke's eyes turn a little sad. And Luke says, the haft is made from a unicorn torn. Just nick someone with it and you curse them with lifelong grief. Miranda says, someone killed a unicorn to make this. And Luke says, if it's any consolation, they probably didn't live to tell the tale. Only the devil's own fools mess with unicorns. And Nick says, enough with the show and tell. I'm fresh out of holy light arrows, so I'll take as many of those as you got. Also, gonna need some hunter sage. And Luke says, I can hook you up with ten arrows, brah. But I'm clean out of Hunter Sage. Have been for a while now. The wolves are the only ones who grow it, and they're not real into sharing these days, even for double the usual price. Nick says, damn it. Luke's eyes narrow, and he leans forward to stare intently at Nick. And Luke says, what do you need the sage for anyway? this have something to do with the murders? Nick says, murders? What murders? Luke says, well, while you were laying low, we lost Denna, and then Carlo got taken out last week. W what? Who the hell could take out Carlo and Denna? Miranda says, can someone fill in the newbie? Who were these important people? And Luke says, Denna was, well, Damn. Was. Damn. Uh, a powerful shapeshifter. Had more forms than I could count. Every one a stone-cold badass. And Nick says Carlo was our local vampire kingpin. Or vampire lord, whatever they call it. All the other bloodsuckers in town deferred to him. And Nick says, well, how'd it happen, Luke? I've never known Denna to lose a fight in her whole damn life, and Carlo was no slouch either. Luke says, well, that's the thing. No one knows who did it. But they say it was brutal, torn apart like bloody paper dolls. And a chill skitters down your spine as you remember the blood wraith scythe like claws. And you glance at Nick, and he gives a tiny shake of his head. Thanks for filling us in. We'll watch our backs out there. And Luke nods, retrieving a bundle of arrows from behind the counter. And Nick stows the arrows in his quiver and tosses Luke a thick stack of cash. As you turn to leave, Luke reaches for you, grazing your wrist. Startled, you wheel back to face him. His eyes seem to have darkened, and is watching and he's watching you with a portentous gaze. Luke says, Before you go, will you let me read your cards, Miranda? And Miranda says, My what? Your fate share. The cards are an ancient tools, the gateway to the mysteries. They hold great power, real power, and something tells me you're gonna need it. Tutorial, if Rook, Luke, Rook, Rook? What the heck? If Luke reads your cards, <laughs> you'll get a special scene with him and learn more about the mysteries surrounding you. Yeah, I need to know my fate. Let's go. Luke totally going full-blown gambit speak. <laughs> With the whole share thing, yeah. I could definitely use all the help I can get. And Luke says, I'm glad I, glad to offer it, share. Nick, could you wait out front? And Nick's gaze shifts between you and Luke and his jaws working. And Nick says, I don't know, Luke. I'm kind of watching out for her. Luke says, she'll be safe with me, brah. This place is warded 12 ways from Sunday. And readings are private. You of all people know the cards don't like to be don't like being overheard. After a moment, Nick gives a tight nod and heads out to the front of the shop, shutting the door behind him. Luke says, "Take a seat, share," and you sit across the glass counter from Luke as he slides out a 
beautiful jewel-toned deck from a velvet pouch. And Miranda says, so how does this work? Can I ask questions? And Luke says, of course, it's your reading, Cher. What do you want, what do you most want to know? I want to know what's been happening to me. And Luke says, ah, a matter of the soul then. And he deftly shuffles the cards, weaving them around his fingers. And Luke says, my mother's a witch, one of the strongest in this town. She's retired now, mostly, but she taught me how to part the veil. And Miranda says, the veil? And he says, some call it that, others, the shroud. It hides the past and future from us. It keeps us locked at the present. And Luke begins laying down cards one by one, face up. Luke says, the world reversed and the moon upright. Interesting. And Miranda says, well, what do those mean? He says, well, if the world is, was upright, you'd be at the end of your journey. It would mean fulfillment, harmony, wholeness. But here, it means that things aren't what they seem, especially you. And Miranda's thinking, not what they seem. Does he know about the dream? And Luke says, and the moon, deep intuition left untapped. The source is unclear, but it's there. And with these two together, you walk two worlds, straddle the threshold with your very soul. And it may sound terrifying, and it is. And, Mir and Miranda says, hooray. No sarcasm there, right? <laughs> and Luke says, but it'll make you stronger, Cher. Stronger than you can imagine. Suspish, I know, right? And Luke, Luke lays three more cards on the glass. Luke says, the magician, the queen of cups, and the devil, two mighty women standing in your path, and a man, a bitter, hateful man. The first is ancient, powerful, beyond reckoning, and she sails the seas of time, and the other is wounded, and very much in love. And Miranda says, well, do they want to hurt me? These two serve, these two serve their own ends, Cher. They may not intend to hurt you, and sometimes we all need pain to grow. But the Queen of Cups, turmoil surrounds her. And Miranda says, she's the one who's wounded, so maybe she needs my help? And Luke shakes his head mournfully. And he says, her eyes are clouded, blinded by that love. And it's not her fault, but it doesn't absolve her. So the devil rides her onward. And if you don't stop her, Cher, she'll destroy everything you love. And more than that, she'll bring this whole city tumbling down. And Miranda says, but what can I do? I'm not powerful. And his eyes are full of sympathy. And Luke lays down more cards. The Prince of Swords, he knows more than he says. And the dark in him is strong, but he won't leave your side. And the Nine of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune and the Emperor reversed. Luke hesitates, chewing on the inside of his lip. And Miranda says, it, it's bad, isn't it? And he says, people think the tower is the worst card in the deck, or the hanged man sometimes. They're all fools, because this nine is it. And your hands clench into tight knots, fingernails digging into your palms. And Luke says, loss, destruction, suffering. It means you'll find love, truth, and a piece of you that you never knew was missing. And then you will lose it again. Miranda says, that's horrible. This was a mistake. Eyes full of sympathy. Luke reaches out and covers your hand with his. And Luke smiles and he says, don't despair, Cher. Never despair. There's always the wheel of fortune turning. <laughs> oh, avoid that bankruptcy part. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Luke says, it's not all doom and gloom. Here, ask me about something else. Something fun. And Miranda says, okay, can you tell me about my love life? And Luke says, oh, share. The will means you'll never lack for love. The hardest part will be knowing your own true heart. Never be afraid to let it lead you. And that's what the Wheel of Fortune really means. You have a much greater destiny than grief. And you will come out the other side. Still you, still you, but so much more. And you squeeze Luke's hand, giving him a shaky smile. Thank you, Luke. It's it's good to know something about what's coming. And he says, 
I wish it wasn't so dire, Cher. I really do. I hate giving good people bad news. Don't be a stranger, you hear? My door is open for you anytime. And Miranda says, well, in that case, you should teach me to read the cards. If that's even possible, I mean. I assume not just anyone can read them like you do. He says, you ain't wrong. Takes a special kind to see through the veil, but sometimes something tells me you'd do just fine. And smiling, you turn and start walking toward the door and then hesitate, looking back. And Miranda says, oh, you never told me what that last card meant. The Emperor reversed? Chewing on his lip, Luke gives you a long, penetrating look. It means don't trust the jealous boy. <laughs> Brown Eyed Beauty says, Luke, you're doing a whole lot on the first meeting, my guy. Slow down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay. I thought the Wheel of Fortune was a TV show that lets you earn money or lose it all. I know, right? <laughs> Outside Luke's shop, you stand next to Nick and tilt your face toward the afternoon sky, still badly thrown by Luke's warning. And Miranda says, so what now? And Nick says, now we gotta go talk to some wolves. And Miranda says, so when you say wolves, do you mean like... And Nick says, where are wolves? Yeah, there's a good sized pack of them here, enough to control a lot of turf. And Miranda says, I take it you're not a fan. Nick says, mildly put. I usually avoid them like the plague, but today we don't have a choice. Nick drives you a short ways into the woods, where late afternoon sunlit sunlight sifts gently through the trees. And Nick says, here we are, one of my least favorite places in the world. And Miranda says, and what is this place exactly? Nick says, Christoph Jensen's private hunting lodge. He's the alpha of the wolf pack and also the guy we need to talk to if we want that hunter sage. You approach the door where a hulking man leans against the wall, glaring at you. And it's the pack bouncer and he's like, what? And Miranda says, we're here to see your boss. And you give the guard a cool, even look. And Miranda says, we're expected. Pack Bouncer says, oh yeah, you won the books? And Nick says, okay, look. Nick leans closer to the guard and lowers his voice into an amiable, confidential tone. And Nick says, you look like a real with it dude, man. Naturally savvy. Always shows in the eyes. And the Pack, says, pack Bouncer says, in the... It's Neville. <laughs> it... It is, isn't it? Without the hair. Ha! I never noticed that. I never noticed. Oh my gosh. So Nick shifts his stance and casually adjusts his crossbow. And Nick says, I made the whole Jimbo thing. I know the whole Jimbo thing made me look like a little hot-headed, sort of unstable even. The bouncer swallows audibly, his eyes flicking nervously between you and Nick. And the pack bouncer says, I... And Nick says, things don't have to go that way. Be better for everyone if we could all just get along, yeah? And after a moment, the man gives a curt nod and swings the door open for you. And Nick says, thanks, man. You got a real diplomatic nature. It'll take you far. And you move past him, raising your eyebrow at Nick. And Miranda says, so you gonna tell me what the whole Jimbo thing was? And Nick says, maybe we're... Maybe when we're not literally walking into the wolf's den. And you step inside and the door swings shut behind you. Miranda says, wow! And the interior is paneled with dark, expensive wood. And you see a grand piano, a flashy whiskey bar, and a collection of hunting trophies hanging on the walls. Miranda says, Nick, is that an eagle's head up there? And Nick says, wolves would hunt eagles, but no, that's a hippogriff. And Miranda says, really gives new meaning to exotic. And Nick says, I'm gonna go see if I can get a word with Kristoff. Stay here and try not to provoke anyone. And Miranda says, aye aye, sir. As Nick heads off, you look around the sleek tobacco-scented lodge. And Miranda says, I'll look at the people. And you look around at a crowd full of swaggering men. 
Miranda's thinking, geez, Nick wasn't kidding about this place. You can practically smell the testosterone and the body spray. <laughs> hey, it's, I read it off the screen. It said Hippogriff. <laughs> Amidst to see a sea of frosted tips and gold jewelry, you spot a stern-looking woman threading through the crowd. And she's cr as she crosses the room, one of the pack members bumps at her shoulder. And the pack member says, Oof! And, she's, and uh, it's a woman, her name is Octavia. She goes, Watch it, pup! Yes, ma'am! Sorry, ma'am! The young man practically flees the room, staring intently at the floor. And Miranda's thinking, wow, who is she? And you lose sight of the woman in the crowd, but your attention soon shifts to the piano music filling the room. And you wander over to a lavish lounge area where a handsome pianist skillfully weaves a complex melody from the keys. And Miranda's thinking, wow, he's good. You stand captivated until he looks up and notices you, and he beckons you over with a nod of his head. It's a man with a black jacket and a red shirt. He has a pocket square and some type of pen on his lapel. Long hair. Evening! You were off in your own little world there, he says. And Miranda says, I was just enjoying your music. And he says, I'm glad. Is there anything in particular you'd like to hear? And Miranda says, can you play something lively? Smiling, the pianist closes his eyes and launches into a song. His fingers flying beautifully over the keys. And you lean against the piano, listening to the bright, unpredictable strains of melody as they rise and fall. Yes, it's Cal! And Miranda says, this is wonderful, what is it called? And he says, the colors of the crescent. It's kind of like my ode to this town, where you never know what you're going to get. Sharp or flat, darkness or light, but always with lots of heart beneath. And Miranda says, you know, that's exactly what it sounds like. And just then, a large door at the end of the room flies open, slamming against the wall. And Miranda says, what? And a muscular, a massive, muscular older man storms out, his face taut with fury. And Nick follows on his heels. Nick says, look, Kristoff, let's just take a minute for a rational discourse. Just one minute. And he says, don't you talk to me about rational think you can just waltz in here after you, what you did to young Jimbo? Nick says, young Jimbo was on a bloodlust killing spree, butchered four innocent people before I took him down. And Miranda says, Nick, you killed one of their pack? And Nick glances at you, his face grim and a little guilty. And Nick says, I didn't want it to go down that way. Hell, I gave him every chance I could, but he was beyond reason. Look, Kristoff, I ha I, if I hadn't stepped up, more people would have died, and then the cops would have been all over this place. Whoops. The way I see it, I did you a favor. Kristoff says, you, you think I owe you. And Nick says, damn right I do. But we can wipe that slate clean if you happen to have some hunter sage on hand. Kristoff's face turns a violent purplish red, and his chest is heaving like bellows and veins bulging in his forehead. Kristoff says, boy, you have three seconds to get the, clear the hell out of my house before I rip that smug look right off your face. Watching the two men argue, you notice something glimmer into view next to Kristoff. A strange, shimmering teardrop. And Miranda is thinking, what the? Should she touch it? Well, of course. Mesmerized, you take a step forward and reach out to touch the shimmering tear. And as your fingers graze the cool, smooth surface, the room melts away from you, sights and sounds fading into the distance. And abruptly, you're standing in a dead slush forest, moonlight painting the leaves with a liquid silver glow. Oh dear, now I shall have to create more Martians! Welcome. <laughs> Bad, Nick, I know, right? You breathe in the cool, wet air, smelling something up ahead. Something vulnerable and alive with a racing heart. And you realize you're not you. You're Kristoff. Look, darling, right between those trees. And it's Octavia. She goes, oh, I see it, baby. All by his lonesome. 
and in a thick co a copse, a huge grizzly bear lumbers through the underbrush. Huff! <laughs> yeah, they didn't give us much choice. You had to touch them. And grizzly, the grizzly bear is kind of grumbling to itself. And the bear stops to scratch its shoulder against the rough bark of a tree, huffing placidly. And Octavia says, bet I get to him first. And Kristoff says, not a chance in hell. Closing your eyes, you reach out for the wolf, coiled, sleeping at your core, and summon it to the surface with a thought. Visions of past hunts flash before your eyes. The ground beneath your paws, the wind in your fur, prey drawing closer and closer, and deep in your chest, the wolf stirs. And your blood surges, heart hammering faster as you feel the ache of your bones moving, crunching and popping into different shapes. And then your muscles shift and stretch, realigning, and a silver gray pelt bristles through your skin. And it's Kristoff in, in werewolf form, and he howls. And beside you, Octavia has shifted too. She bears her teeth, howling at the sky. She's a red wolf, and she howls. And together you race through the trees, and you can smell the tang of grass, crushed beneath your feet, the loamy soil, and the cool, distance, distant cool of water. And ahead you taste the pungent musk of the bear, the blood, the iron of the blood rushing beneath its hide. And Kristoff snarls, and your paws pound the dew-slick ground, and in moments you're almost on top of your prey, and the bear turns and rears, showing its huge teeth. And the grizzly bear roars back. Let's see. I'll pounce on the bear. And snarling, you close the distance and throw yourself at the bear. And Kristoff gr uh, growls again. And so does the grizzly bear. It's snarling. And the bear snarls, swiping at you with huge claws as your jaws clamp down on its throat. And warm blood fills your mouth. And Octavia dives in next to you, snarling and ripping at the bear's thick hide. Octavia growls, and the grizzly bear roars, and the bear hits the ground, and you feel its final heartbeats ebb away into the night, as Octavia lifts her bloodied snout in silent question. Kristoff, let's see, we'll shift back to humans. And you reach inward to the part of you that remains human and draw it to the fore. The faraway agony washes over you again, your skeleton snapping back into its human form, muscles and fur receding. Finally, you stand and offer a hand to Octavia, who's also shifted back to human shape. Octavia says, thanks, baby. And Kristoff says, you looked incredible out there, darling. So vicious. You gotta keep my man on his paws. You embrace, kissing each other hungrily. You've obtained Kristoff's tier. Looks like, uh, two, four, six, seven. So it looks like there's seven tiers that we're going to have to collect throughout the book. Touching a person's monster tier allows you to relive an important moment from their past. Gathering all seven tiers will also unlock the hidden scene at the end of the book. The memory dissipates around you like a mist. And you're back at Kristoff's lodge, stumbling with dizziness, overwhelmed by the light and noise. And Miranda says, Miranda's thinking, what was that? And where? Nick rushes over to your side, steadying you as you sway in place. And Nick says, what was, what the hell happened just now? Looked like you were going to pass out. And Miranda says, I, I, I don't. And Christoph says, get the hell out of here, boy. You too, if you're with him, before I change my mind and gut you both. While you were lost in the vision, a group of fierce looking men have gathered around Christoph, glaring menacingly. At you and Nick. Nick says, okay, it's officially half past time to go. Here, lean on me. And Nick hastily ushers you to the door past the scowling crowd. Outside, you take a seat on the log to catch your breath while Nick paces in front of you. And Nick says, okay, all right. So they're not exactly open to negotiation. What if I sneak us into the back end? Miranda says, Nick? The lodge door opens, and the sharply dressed piano player steps out, looking furtively over his shoulder. Major Bloodkeep revives? Yes. The most frustrating bonus scene ever? Oh! Okay, I'll, I guess I'll have, I have something to look forward to. 
Uh, hello again. And Nick says, What do you want? We're kind of having a private discussion over here. You're Nick Ryder, right? The Night Hunter? I heard what happened inside, and I, I think I can help. I'm Cal Lowell, and, and I have some Hunter Sage. It's not much, but I'm willing to give it to you. Miranda says, You do that for us? Why? Cal says, Well, the thing is, I kind of need your help first. Nick says, yeah, what inevitable bound to get us killed, t killed type of help do you did you need? And Cal says, it's my little brother Donnie. He's missing. And if you can help me find him, the sage is all yours. And Nick looks over at you, his eyes narrowed with distrust. Nick says, you buying this, Miranda? Nick says, I think we should help him. And you look appraisingly at Cal who meets your eyes with an open, pleading gaze. Miranda says, I think he's for real, Nick. I can usually tell. Cal, thank you. I know the sage is rare, and we're not exactly popular with your crew. Sounds like this would be a risk for you. And Cal gives a tight nod, looking away. And Nick lets out an explosive sigh. He says, you know what? Fine. You got yourself a deal. Guess I'm just helping everyone these days. And Cal says, I... Thank you. I really appreciate this. Nick says, let's just get this done. Tell me about the last time you saw your kid, brother. And Cal says, two days ago at our place over in Bywater, I'd just gotten back from a trip to Vegas, and he was acting weird. Guilty, almost. And the next day, I came home from work, and he wasn't there. And I should have been able to pick up his trail, but his scent is just... gone. Like someone erased him. And Nick says, there's always something left. Lead the way, wolf. Cal leads you and Nick to a small, cozy house. Thick with the lingering scents of wood smoke and old coffee. And Miranda says, it's nice in here. Feels like a good place to call home. And Cal frowns and he says, yeah, still feels like Donnie might walk out of his room any time to grab his 15th snack of the day. And Miranda says, you can't smell him at all? Cal says, nothing. It's just wrong. This is our place, our den. His scent should be everywhere like mine. And Nick says, curiouser and curiouser. Nick rummages in his coat, pulling out a tiny star-shaped charm. At first, nothing happens. Then it lights up, glowing a warm orange. And Miranda says, and that means... Nick says, there's a warding spell in place. There's no trace of Donnie because someone didn't want there to be. And Cal says, so can you turn it off? Nick says, the spell's not a light bulb, pal. I can I can break it, but I'll need to, uh, to rustle up a few ingredients. Should only take half an hour or so. I'm gonna need something of Donnie's to focus the spell. Something personal, preferably small. That couch gives fam looks familiar, BB vibes? Yeah. <laughs> Cal says, got it. I'll find something. And Nick says, Miranda, you stay put. I mean it. And Miranda says, sir, yes, sir. Nick disappears out the back door, leaving you with Cal. Sighing deeply, Cal rubs both hands over his face. And Miranda says, it must be really hard to feel so helpless when your brother's missing. And Cal says, it is. I'm, I'm not used to that. Protecting Donnie's on me. Always has been. Now it's like I'm letting him down every minute that goes by. And it should be easy to find something of Donnie's to use for this spell, but I'm so messed up I can barely think straight. And Miranda says, well, maybe I can help. See, Tutorial says, help Cal look for the spell ingredient for a chance to get closer to him and learn more about his past. Sure, we'll help Cal. Miranda says, I can help you look if you'd like the company. And Cal hesitates a moment and then gives you a warm smile. The corners of his dark eyes crinkling. Cal says, yeah, yeah, I think I'd like that. Cal moves into the small kitchen, sorting through stacks of mugs and silverware. One second. I'll search the kitchen with Cal. You move to the stand, move to stand beside Cal at the kitchen counter, and you can feel the heat rising from his skin, even through his clothes. And Miranda says, 
Wow, you're really warm. <laughs> it's my favorite romantic theme. Yeah, this is a good one. This is from Des Desire and Decorum, yeah? Cal smiles, setting down a small coffee cup with deliberate care. He says, it's a wolf thing. We all run hot. Donnie likes all the windows open all the time, even when it's pouring rain. Used to drive me nuts. Well, I mean, I know it's from Nightbound, but it, I feel like the music has come from somewhere else, too. And Cal goes quiet, staring into the kitchen sink. And Miranda says, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. The Royal Masquerade. That's, that's it. And, like, I knew it was in another book. Oh, it was used in D&D, but I'm pretty sure it was first featured here. Oh, okay. And Cal says, no, no. It actually feels good to talk about him. The sad kind of good, but good. And you both go quiet for a moment, continuing your search. Looking around, your gaze lands on a delicate wood carving of a swan. And Miranda says, this is beautiful. Where did it come from? And Cal fights a smile, and his cheeks turning a little pink. Cal says, um, from me, actually. And Miranda says, you made this? That's incredible. I can see every little feather. And Cal says, thanks. I like working with wood, so, you know. And Miranda says, so you're an amazing piano player and a master wood carver? I gotta say, you're really destroying all my werewolf stereotypes. And Cal bursts out laughing, a deep, rich rumble you could feel in your chest. Cal says, I guess the whole hyper-aggressive alpha male thing never worked for me. And Miranda says, I can tell. And Miranda says, so tell me about playing the piano. How did you get to be so good at it? I always heard the music and things, I guess, since I was little. I sang all the time. Not very well, mind you. My mom noticed. Honestly, my singing is pretty hard to miss, so she found me an alternative. And Miranda says, she chose well. I can't speak to your singing, though now I kind of really want to hear it, but you're amazing on the keys. And Cal says, thanks. Maybe I'll sing for you sometime. Like, if you ever feel the need to laugh hysterically. But yeah, the songs I write, they're mostly for her. And Miranda says, she's a wolf too? And Cal kind of frowns. He goes, yeah, was. She died when I was pretty little. And Cal sighs, turning away from the kitchen. He says, I think I'm going about this wrong. Nick said we needed something personal, right? And Miranda says, yeah, maybe you'd have better luck in his room? And Cal's eyes flit to the cramped staircase, a pained look crossing his face. You're right. Just, it's hard. Being in there when it doesn't smell like him, it feels wrong. Sorry, that probably sounds really weird to you. And Miranda says, no, I get it. Do you want me to look for you, or I could stay down here and... Cal says, no, I, I think it'll be easier if we go together. Help keep me focused. And Miranda says, okay. Cal takes a deep breath, and then the two of you head up the stairs. Cal leads you into a cozy moonlit room. A few framed photos are arranged haphazardly on the dresser, mostly of Cal and a younger boy. And Miranda says, is this Donnie? He has such a sweet face. <laughs> Proud eyed beauty. Ah, the smell of gym socks and old chips. <laughs> Hashtag boys room. <laughs> Cal says he can be a really sweet kid. He and I, we're the last ones left of our family. And he's all I've got. And I'm all he's got. Been that way for a long time. And Miranda says, that's so sad. And Cal says, yeah, it is. It'd be a hell of a lot easier if Donnie would just listen to me. And Cal moves to the nightstand, sifting carefully through the scattered possessions. And Miranda says, is it tough keeping Donnie safe? And Cal says, Donnie's a good kid. He really is, but yeah. He's young, hot-blooded, always trying to prove himself to someone. Everyone. Hey, Fuzzy. And if he's in trouble... Cal trails off, staring down at the nightstand. Slowly, he picks up a necklace, a small pendant of polished stone hanging from a leather cord. <laughs> My nephew's room. That's funny. And it's Donnie's necklace. Examine it. And Cal says, this, our mom made this for Donnie, and he'd never leave it behind, unless... 
Cal cuts himself off, his strong jaw working. I should... I'll squeeze his shoulder. You rest your hand on Cal's densely muscle... Mu muscled? Oh my god. Muscled shoulder squeezing. <laughs> even though... Even through his jacket, his skin is hot against your palm. We'll find him, I promise, Miranda says. And Cal jerks a little, surprised, and then slides his hand over yours. And you stay that way for a moment, silent. Downstairs, you hear the front door bang open and Nick's voice calls up the stairs. Anybody home? This spell's not gonna cast itself. And Miranda says, I guess we should head back down there. Is that a... And Cal clutches the necklace at his fist. Yeah, this should do it. And Nick looks up at you, and Nick looks up as you and Cal walk down the stairs. Nick says, you find something we can use? Cal wordlessly holds up Donnie's necklace. Perfect, put it in here. Nick holds up a glass jar and Nick Cal drops the necklace inside. Nick screws the lid back on and on the jar and starts to shake it. A swirling pearlescent glow starts to emanate from the jar, glowing brighter and brighter until Nick finally whips off the lid. And Mir Miranda says, whoa! And the glow explodes out of the jar, rushes through the room and rattling the furniture as it fades away. There we go. Ward's dead and gone. Cautiously, Cal tilts his head back and sniffs at the air, and a broad grin spreads across his face. Cal says, he's back! I can smell him! And Miranda says, I can't believe you just broke that spell with a mason jar. You didn't have, like, a cauldron or something? And Nick says, night hunters think outside the cauldron, Miranda. We're renegades. Cal says, we gotta go. I don't want to lose the trail. And he rushes out the door with you and Nick hot on his heels. The three of you pile into Nick's car and drive through the streets with the windows down, following Cal's rapid fire instructions or directions. And Cal says, left here. It's getting stronger this way. And until you pull up in front of an elegant, sprawling building. Cal says, this is it! Here, he's in here! Or he's in there. Nick lets out a low whistle, eyeing the building. And Nick says, well, hell, when it rains, it pours. Miranda says, what does that mean? What is this place? Nick says, the Persephone. Fanciest, most expensive club in town. Miranda says, okay, and what exactly happens in there? Nick reaches back to adjust his crossbow and his face growing grim. Nothing good. And what happens behind the gilded doors of Club Persephone? And will you find Donnie there? Keep playing to find out. <laughs> and that ends our night.